Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spindle TV. I just noticed I'm wearing a Build It TV shirt during a Spindle TV class, but hey, that's all right. It's all the same thing. But uh, how are you all doing tonight? Uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're getting ready for the holidays and uh, all the chaos that uh, occurs at the towards the end of the year and, and uh, getting things uh, ready for family visits and parties and, and family visits, <laughs> in-laws, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, but um, uh, all seriousness, I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday. Uh, no matter what uh, you celebrate, uh, I hope it's uh, enjoyable for you, your family, and your loved ones. Uh, and it's safe, right? So, that being said, uh, before we get into class, I, I jumped on a little bit early. We don't start till 7.15. I jumped on so I can make uh, a couple of announcements um, uh, for... Uh, uh, upcoming events. Sorry, I had to get my train of thought going there. Um, so for the last couple of years, we uh, have not been able to do any of the woodworking shows uh, because, uh, you know, the COVID hit and everybody was homeward bound and uh, we started doing live events online uh, and, uh, and streaming and everything. And it's just taken a while to get the ball rolling again with doing shows, going out and doing shows and getting the shows started and stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to make an announcement for our 2023 schedule coming up in January. Uh, we will Friday through Sunday, January 6th through the 8th, we're going to be in Baltimore, Maryland at the woodworking shows, Digital Woodcarver uh, and all. Uh, so January uh, 6th through the 8th, we'll be in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, January 20th through the 22nd, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio. For any of you that are in the Ohio area, uh, Friday through Sunday uh, in Columbus, Ohio, we'll be there. And um, January 27th through the 29th, we're going to be in Indianapolis Woodworking Show in Indiana. Uh, and um, then uh, starting in February, February 5th, uh, February, uh, should I say 3rd through the 5th, I believe it is, uh, we're going to be in Atlanta, Georgia at the Woodworking Shows. Now, that's all the shows I have up to this date. We'll, we'll, we'll announce later on any shows beyond that but uh the month of january and the start of february we're going to be in baltimore columbus indianapolis and atlanta so if you're in the area and you're kind of you know ready to get back out to see the woodworking shows and things and and uh you know uh see us all please come out come out check out the booth and visit us uh we're gonna have some uh nice new things we'll have the yeti smart bench at our uh booth and and some other items and stuff but uh yeah come on out say hi Tell us how you're doing and, uh, you know, hang out and see what's up. So um, be sure to uh, uh, be sure to check us out. And for more information, you can visit the woodworkingshows.com for more information on their schedules. Or you can go to digitalwoodcarver.com and under the contact menu, you can go down to shows and see the dates and times and stuff for those shows. But yeah, uh, check that out. And if you know anybody that's looking to buy a CNC machine, and of course, you know I'm kind of associated with Digital Woodcarver, not kind of, I am associated with Digital Woodcarver, um, but uh, so I'm gonna promote them, albeit, uh, but uh, uh, if you're looking, know someone that's looking for a small size, mid size, or even commercial line uh, CNC machine, uh, we will have our machines at the show, and uh, if they pre-order, they get free shipping by picking up at the shows. It'd be a great time to save some money. Uh, so keep that in mind and then right now up until I'm kind of going to the end of the month But uh, we have our dear Santa special going on at digital woodcarver You have friends or family or people that are you know that you know are looking for um, Looking for a CNC machine Send them our way and uh, if you you know uh, Fill out a form that you recommended them to us and stuff uh, if you have a digital woodcarver and you've done a demo and things like that um uh, you can get a commission on the sale. So 2% uh, uh, cash or 3% store credit kind of thing. So uh, we kind of pay you to help us out, all right? So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, Dear Santa letters, uh, meaning that they can write in a quote request to Dear Santa, and Dear Santa will give them some specials. Uh, and um, uh, there's some good savings. So if you're looking for a CNC machine and you're just watching this to see what's up, check out digitalwoodcarver.com send a letter to Santa through the website and that'd be great or come see us at the shows right so um, but uh, the uh, class tonight 
I saw, I was, I was looking at projects and I had a friend of mine sending me over some, you know, different things like ideas and stuff. I want, I knew I wanted to do a Christmas project. I just wasn't sure what kind of Christmas project I wanted to do. And, um, they sent me over this, uh, kind of little, uh, Christmas tree scene with a deer and stuff. And there was a video of a, a gentleman who, uh, I don't know if it was last year or whatever. Uh, he made a video about doing a kind of a full size one. And I thought, oh, that would be cool because these techniques could apply to, uh, I, we're going to be doing kind of a Christmas tree scene and, and things like that, but it could apply to nativity scenes and, and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, we're going to go big kind of, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, we're hoping, I'm hoping that by the end of it, it'll be something that can be flat packed, meaning it could be broke down, flat packed and stored away, right? For next year and everything It's not just a one-off item. Uh, that's the goal is to make this modular so it can be broke down. Uh, something that might even be able to be added to if there was space available for, you know, as the years go on. Um, and, uh, but we're going big. And so for you guys and girls with smaller CNC's, we can, you know, look at, uh, how to break it down or how to divide the parts up to cut on smaller CNC machines that they could be assembled and put together and stuff. Because I have a small machine too. I don't have a big commercial unit. Uh, I got to play on a big commercial unit uh, over this past week uh, in Indiana, and uh, it was nice uh, to be able to work on a, a f stretch my legs on a four by eight, you know, machine and stuff. You know, I have the 2440, 24 inch by 40 inch cutting area, and it was really neat to uh, uh, work on the bigger machine and have all that room to play with. I didn't use all the room, but you know, it was nice uh, to uh, be able to uh, mess around with it. And uh, so this is going to be for you know, it's going to be a big project, but hopefully. It'll be scalable, right? That's the goal. And it'll be something that can be broken down and packed away. Uh, and it's something that uh, if you have a smaller machine, we can kind of break it up and cut parts out and assemble them to make it full size, right? So all of those good things. So uh, uh, let me just say that. And I do want to say thank you to Brooks Martin for the super chat. For those of you that are new or that are watching me and uh, didn't know that we had a new feature with the chats, we have uh, Super Chat and Super Stickers uh, where you can support the channel uh, and you can, with the Super Chats, you can uh, uh, offer up a denomination uh, money for a certain period of time that your comment stays at the top of the board uh, or the Super Stickers where you just send up little stickers in the chat uh, for a certain denomination and stuff and, you know, uh, pennies or dollars or whatever the case may be, but all of it goes to support the channel and our projects. So. Brooks Martin, thank you very much uh, for the Super Chat uh, donation. I appreciate you. And uh, with that being, uh, that was a good way to kick things off. And uh, and uh, you guys and girls follow suit because, you know, uh, Santa Claus doesn't make it all the way to Ocala, Florida. So I got I to gotta fend for myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Santa Claus goes everywhere. All right. He's magic. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and quit rambling at 7.16. I, I did that time that almost perfect. I went one minute over. Let's get over to the um, the channel. What channel am I on? I'm on channel, my camera. I should be on channel uh, standby. Do, 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 do. Let me... Uh, stand by one second, ladies and gentlemen. Restore. You're going to see my green screen. Hey, look at that. There's a green screen behind me.
two, testing one, two. Okay, can you all hear me now? Testing one, two. Sorry about that. I had to um, uh, let me know you should be able to hear me now. Uh, I didn't have sound two seconds ago. Uh, sorry about the interruption. I had to uh, hook up my computer screen back to the camera because I went on a little vacation trip up to uh, Indiana and I took all my camera and stuff with me. So uh, I thought that I had it uh, going, but you should hear me now. Can you hear me now? Yes, good, okay, cool. Uh, so sorry for the little interruption. It was going really good up until that moment. <laughs> so, all right, uh, we're here now, we're back. Okay, so uh, if I didn't say it in my hyperness, Thank you all for coming and hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate you each and every week and every other week, should I say each and every other week, uh, coming out and hanging with me. Uh, it's great. So thanks for that. All right, let's get started here. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of in a 2D view, if you will, uh, I'm going to kind of try to lay out what we're, what our goal and what we're doing is here. And then we're going to lay everything out and create the vector pass for things to, you know, be able to get cut out and stuff. Uh, I can't, I'm not that good in SketchUp to where I could draw this in 3D and say, oh, look at this 3D scene. So we're going to kind of um, lay it out here and uh, uh, just kind of give you a mental visual, if you will, uh, as we cut out the parts. Um, and if you saw the thumbnail of the video, uh, it's that thumbnail is not going to be the actual project. We're, we're going to pull from some vectors that I have here. So I've got uh, different vectors of some different uh, animals and snowman and presents and trees and things. But um, the one thing that somebody could tell me from the group, because I didn't do it before class started, but if you could measure <laughs> if anybody has any Christmas lights up or anything, can you tell me, I think it's about six inches or 12 inches between Christmas lights, like on an indoor string, not the outdoor string. Don't go hanging off the roof just to measure. But uh, I think it's about six inches between lights on the on the uh, on a string of Christmas lights. And I forgot to measure. I was going to measure my lights and um, I didn't do that. But that's going to be important because that's going to play a factor in our little design here. So if anybody knows that answer off the top of their head, great. If anybody's sitting by a set of string of lights, could you measure that? Uh, hey, Ronnie, how are you doing? Uh, and could you let me know? It could be in metric centimeters, wherever you're from. I don't care. Just let me know. <laughs> but I'm going to assume it's about six inches between lights. And we're going to work off that, but you can make changes to the design to actually fit what your lights are. All right, so let's kind of uh, get started with here. First things first, I've got some different uh, Christmas tree outlines, Christmas tree vectors. Uh, that's gonna be the main back scene. Uh, we're gonna start with kind of the foundation, if you will, the back scene, and we're gonna build our way up. Now, let me, uh, I want you to kind of imagine this in a two-dimensional scale, if you will. Um, and I'm gonna kind of draw it over here. Uh, we're going to have a platform, a square box. I personally think, uh, rather than gluing up this box, of course, because we want to be able to break it down and flat pack it, I personally think that pocket hole butt joinery, where we butt the ends up to one another and use pocket hole joinery, if you got a pocket hole jig or something, you know, Craig jig or whatever, um, uh, would be a way to go. Or you could screw however you know you want, countersink and screw. But... I want to try to make this to where it breaks down as much as possible. So the entire scene, depending on how big or small you want it, is going to sit on this platform. This platform is going to be a box that uh, is not going to be very wide. So coming off of the off of the wall, imagine off the wall, we're going to be using half inch plywood. In my case, I'm going to be using half inch birch plywood. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have quite a few things and they're going to kind of almost be layered, if you will. Uh, we'll have our trees, uh, some animals and snowman and presents and things like that. And they're going to be layered as they come out. And I want to, you know, be no more than I would probably say uh, on my box, I'd probably stick around 16 inches. Um, okay, so uh, John says his strand is three inches. So that's important. 
uh, information to know you know the space between your lights and you'll see why when we get into it here in just a minute but this platform uh, I I'm, I'm thinking that we're, uh, you know, uh, probably going to be about uh, eight inches uh, um, high. And the, uh, about, in my case, like I said, I'm gonna probably go about 16 inches wide. Now, um, so imagine, if you will, that we have a box. And again, we're looking at a side view here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so a side view. So we're going to have a box and uh, we're going to have a, basically a platform, a, a, a base, you know, a lid on that box. This, I'm going to have an overhang all the way around, a lip all the way around uh, that overhangs. And um, if I turn that box sideways, so now we're going to be looking at a top view. So imagine this is our top view of our base. There are going to be we're going to basically kind of do almost like mortise and tenons. We're going to have different slots cut into the top panel. And in these slots are bases of our Christmas trees and our animals and everything. They're going to fit right in there uh, to, uh, they just stick right in mortise and tenon, if you will, uh, no assembly, no glue or nothing like that. So they can be pulled out and it can be broken down but we're gonna have them kind of spaced in there on that lid. And we're gonna, all of that stuff is gonna be laid out exactly how it does as we create our design, as it needs to be. I know that sounds confusing, but it's not really. I just need you to kind of visualize. So I'm gonna, I'll show you, let me see if I can, let me see if I can uh, come into, Give me just a moment here. Do, do, do. Uh, we're gonna go youtube.com. And I gotta give credit to the video guy anyway, uh, that where the inspiration came from and all. And um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Bear with me, I'm pulling up the scene just to give you a visual so that, that for those of you that, that are more visual uh, uh, orientated, uh, so it can kind of help you out here. Let's see if I can. All right, let me maximize that up. And let me drag this over onto the screen here. So if you'll indulge me for a minute, you see this full size platform. Um, we're kind of going with something like this uh, is what we're, what we're working with and everything. Uh, this is a great video. Uh, this is uh, subscribe like wood, <laughs> uh, the channel. And um, uh, hopefully y'all saw that. And um, stuff, it could be a nativity scene, uh, you know, uh, and things.
All right. So we should uh, we should be caught back up and not buffering here. Let's see if I can get this stream back on track. I hate when it does that to me. Okay, so I apologize. Uh, we buffered quite badly and everything, so hopefully we're back on track. Give me a thumbs up if you still hear me, you can see me, and you're still hanging out with me. We lost a lot of viewers during that downtime. So uh, thank you, YouTube, for that. I appreciate you very much for, you know, God, I appreciate you, YouTube. Okay, all right, so we should be back, and uh, things should be going well. Uh, man, so... Anyhow, hopefully you were able to see the example that I put up of the gentleman's uh, build, uh, Likewood. Um, uh, that is kind of the theme that we're, we're working on, but I wanted to go a little bit more detail into the actual design and the layout. And this could apply for all kinds of things. It could apply for nativity scenes. It could apply for um, really any occasion. It doesn't have to be the Christmas holiday. It could be really any situation or any occasion. Uh, it could be just, you know, it could be, heck, it could be a fun, you know, uh, background for a kid's play. Who knows, right? So take what you learn from here, from the class, from the design, and apply it to other things, right? Uh, we're just going to be building a, we're just going to be building a, uh, a Christmas scene and everything. So hopefully you kind of understand uh, we're going to have a platform on that base of that platform or where these items are going to sit. They're going to be kind of three-dimensional in a sense that they are two-dimensional cuts that are going to be uh, kind of stacked one in front of the other to create this three-dimensional scene uh, and, and everything. And so with that being said, we've got to lay out the parts for the base. We've got to lay out the parts for the lid that all the pieces are going to fit into, and we have to lay out all of the pieces. So I'm going to pick a tree. Let's start with a tree. Uh, and I've got a quite a variety of trees to choose from. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, go with this one. I like the way that uh, the uh, branches kind of are soft and rounded and things. So I'm happy with that. There's quite a few choices to choose from, but we'll go with that. And I'm going to throw this up onto the board here. And I'm going to go to my size tool. Let's get out of the tool path side of things. And let's go to the size tool. And I want the... Uh, size to be in my case I want my back tree I actually want it to be about six foot tall so um, I'm going to in my height I'm gonna type in the number six and a comma uh, which stands for the symbol for foot uh, and I'm gonna hit the equal sign and that'll give me that 72 inches okay uh, and um, it's gonna size up to 72 by about 47 inches wide and uh, I'm good with that now, for myself, um, the for myself, I only have a twenty four forty, so I'm I'm gonna have to you know break it down uh, if I don't take it over to a friend who has a four by eight. But uh, I'm going to have to break it down to fit within my forty inch by twenty four inch cutting area. So I'd have to I'm gonna have to have a two panels. Uh, and stuff that might hinge open or something like that. Things that we got to think about based on our machine sizes and stuff. But right now I'm going to start with the full size and then I can figure out the scaling and the breakdown from there. So what we're going to have, what I'm thinking of is I'm going to have a, uh, a large tree, which will be my six foot tree in the front. And then I'm going to have a smaller tree that may be off to the side here. And of course, this nativity scene can be whatever wall space you have, right? It could be as big or as wide as, as you want it and everything. And I'm, I'm not gonna limit myself too much on the width. Uh, I just wanna see what lays out and looks good. I don't wanna try to cram everything into a small spot. Uh, I wanna kind of let it spread just a little bit. But um, I think I'm going to have a, a smaller tree 
uh, be in the front. Now this looks weird. I'm just doing the layout right now. We're not having overlapping vectors or any of that stuff. I'm just kind of laying out and figuring out what you know my plan is uh, and everything. I would like to have um, on the imagine, if you will, I'll draw the kind of the platform, right? That little box there will be the platform and everything. Um, I'd like to have a, uh, for mine, I'd like to have the Christmas present uh, kind of be sitting, you know, somewhere down here. And I think rather, you know, than it being kind of a three dimensional uh, like this uh, and everything, I think I'm going to do just a flat bottom right across. So I'm going to take my vector there and I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to uh, basically select these nodes here and I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and delete them. No, undo that. I don't want to delete this corner. <laughs> so hold that shift key and turn that one off and come over here. I don't want to delete this corner. Hold that shift key and turn that off. And now I'm going to hit the D, D for Delta, D for delete on my keyboard to get rid of those. And then I'm going to delete that point as well to kind of create this line here. And um, I think I can uh, delete that point just to create that straight line. So that present, let's get out of node editing mode. That present will be uh, sitting down on that platform uh, kind of down here. Now, I'm going to put things on different layers so they're different colors so visually you can see them. But again, we're just doing kind of a mock-up of what this thing would be in real life. We're using half inch plywood. In my case, I'm going to be using half inch birch plywood. Uh, but let's put things on different layers so they're different colors. So that might make things a little easier to see. So my tree, my main tree, I'm going to come down and move that to a new layer. And I'm going to call this my large tree. This is where layers, guys and girls, it's all about education. I'm trying to show you different things, uh, you know, in the software. But layers is a great way to separate parts of your design to make things easier to work with. So the large tree, I'm going to go ahead and have that as a red vector. Uh, any vector that's on there, it'll be red in the background. Uh, my smaller tree, I'm going to move that, select it and move it to a new layer. And I'm going to call this my small tree. And the drawing color, any layer, you know, any vector that's on there, I'll have that uh, kind of a uh, turquoise blue. Um, oh, that's a little light. Let's change that color for all to see here. Let's go blue. Okay, and the Christmas present, uh, let's move that to a new layer. And I'm just gonna call it present under the tree. And let's give that a nice bright color. That wasn't very bright. Let's see if we can give that a little bit better brightness. It's not the greatest in the world, but at least you can see the different vectors, right? Now, when I was searching, hey, thank you, Chris Leach. I appreciate you very much for that, uh, uh, that uh, super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, the, when I was picking out these vectors and all these different things and stuff, um, I was trying to figure out what I would want. And the nativity scene, now I, I, I'm doing a Christmas tree theme, kind of an outdoor, you got these trees, there's going to be lights, we're putting lights in these, uh, so they're going to be lit up and stuff, but then I started, you know, I was looking at the guy's example in the video, and he had animals and stuff, and I thought, oh, that's cool, but I want a snowman, and, and I want some other things, but um, he had a fox, uh, he had a fox that was sitting, he had, he had a deer, uh, he had a rabbit, and he had a fox, and it really looked good, it looked good in his sample and everything, I liked it a lot. But I wanted, 
I so I had the fox and I had a, I had two sitting foxes. Uh, I wasn't sure which you know which one that I was gonna like and all, but then I decided that I actually wanted this peeking fox right here, uh, and uh, I'm gonna move him over, and I actually want to size him up. where he's standing on the present um, and uh, kind of peeking into it. So I want that bad boy. He's going to be standing on top. I'll size up the present to match him. I want him to be a pretty decent size. So uh, his feet are not going to be in the, we're going to, we're going to draw all the little tenons. We got to put all the tenons on all the parts and stuff, but uh, he's going to be standing on top of this box. So something about like that. And I'm just going to make it, I'll make it where his paw actually rests on that piece of material. But uh, it's going to be behind the scene because where the present is, remember we're stacking things from back to front. So, you know, there's going to be one thing in front of another and stuff. So where he is on the present all right on the back side of his paw, I'm just going to probably screw a little piece of wood so that when he slides into his slot, uh, that will rest on the top of the piece of plywood that's behind it, which is the present, right? So, um, everything. Uh, Darwin, if your picture's not clear, you should have a little gear at the bottom of your preview window, of your YouTube window. Uh, click on that gear and change the quality up to high resolution. Change the quality up to high resolution, and that should clear things up for you. Uh, you probably are at the default resolution, which is like, you know, 320, 380 or something like that. Change it to the uh, high resolution, and that should clear things up. Um, let's see here. Uh, sometimes hitting the refresh will clear that up. Yeah, Gary, thank you. That that might help as well, too. Uh, but uh, And Brooks, thank you for jumping in on that also. Um like, uh, very good. So I want kind of cheeky. I want that little wolf or little fox. I want him to be kind of, uh, up on the box, kind of peeking into it, right? A little playfulness, uh, and everything. So that's kind of what I'm going to have, uh, for mine. Um, now, uh, I would like, uh, to have mine's going to be, it's going to be somewhat wide. So right now, again, we're kind of on a small screen here. Right, so it's hard to kind of you know uh, tell, but uh, uh, where that white box, that white board is kind of representing 48 inches, right, four feet. I'm going to be going a little bit wider, and everything. So when I lay everything out here, but what I would like is um, kind of uh, inside or uh, on the in front of the present, the next layer, the next layer coming up. Uh, I would like um, to, and let me let me make this wire because it's gonna. I want to bring all this in, so I'm gonna come a little wider. Things are gonna get spread out a little bit more, if you will. Uh, things are gonna get spread out some, but what I would like is I would like old Frosty here. Okay. He's going to be in front of the fox, kind of like this. And again, we'll straighten things out so his tenon can go into that top platform and stuff like that. Uh, but I'd like that to kind of over here. And again, these are going to be just blank silhouettes. Um, uh, there's not going to be uh, uh, any paint or color to them unless you're an artist and you want to paint and color it, right, and give it some life. Uh, and everything. I'm not an artist, so I'm going to be kind of just uh, a nice, beautiful, uh, I don't think I'm going to go with a, just a clear coat. I'm going to go with a, I want it to be rustic. So let me, let me interrupt here for my train of thought. This wall scene, I kind of like country rustic, if you will. I'm going to do kind of almost a whitewash chalk paint, uh, kind of a, a pale, white chalk paint uh, for all of the parts and pieces and everything. And it's just gonna be a nice, uh, with the with the lights, and it's not, I'm not gonna have multicolor lights. I'm gonna have one color, probably just a, a clear uh, light and everything. 
but I really want on my back wall, because my back wall is dark. Uh, it's a dark accented wall. I wish you could see it, uh, but um, I really want kind of a whitewash, if you will. Uh, but I'm going to use a chalk paint, kind of a whitewash, and, um, and that's it. I'm not going to, I'm going to let the lights kind of just make it pop, if you will. It's going to have a nice clear coat, so there'll be a, uh, a bit of a gleam to it, gloss and everything. But I'm not going to paint Frosty's face or the fox's eyes or, you know, the deer's this and that and everything. And you could, absolutely, it would look amazing, right, if it was really decorated up, you know, and everything. I'm just going with natural wood with kind of a whitewash, and it's going to be kind of that rustic, yeah, so um, if I were to show you a uh, country sign, country wood signs, if I were to show you, uh, let's go to images and um, let's, uh, ba -ba Bear with me. I don't know if I'm going to distress it, but let me pull this over here. Um, can you guys and girls see? It's a very small example. I wish it was bigger. Um, but uh, I'm going to kind of go with just that uh, chalk paint. Uh, nice chalk paint. I don't think I'm going to distress it. I don't know. I might. It might go with the rest of the theme of my furniture and stuff. But uh, I'm going to have kind of that, I, again, I don't know if I'm going to distress it, but I'm going to have that kind of thing going on there, right? So that's what I'm going to be doing with my plywood. But you could all, you could do the faces and the decorations and all of that wonderful jazz and it would be, you know, pretty cool, right? So, okay. So I want Frosty over here, uh, you know, kind of, uh, he's about to smack the fox on the butt, say, hey, don't you be getting into that present uh, and then on the other side, I want this family. I do like country. I do like deer scenes and everything. I thought about the reindeer, right? I thought about the reindeer, you know, uh, coming in and flying, but nah, you know, maybe in my, maybe in my Santa Claus scene with a Santa Claus sleigh, you know, uh, in something like that. Cause it could be anything, right? It could be these trees. It could be the, the, the a nativity scene with baby Jesus and, the wise men and all that fun stuff, right? This is just silhouettes that we're building up and everything. But I want this family here. And um, let's size these guys up. And I want to, they're going to be layered. And I want to kind of pull them over. Just where it's laying right here. And... That's going to be about the maximum that I'm going to do. Uh, my baby deer might not be so far away. Let me ungroup them and let me bring him in a little bit. You know, close to mama. And let me bring the deer closer over. And again, I'm going to level out their feet and all so that everything, you know, sits across that platform and stuff. But uh, I think that's going to be as busy as I want it. Um, I think that's going to be about as busy as I want it uh, for this example. But take what we're about to do. This is just a kind of a layout, just a visual, right? To see, you know, how things are going to stack up. But take this and then... Uh, grow from there, right? It could be anything. It could be anything you want. Now, overall, my platform is going to be um, about eight foot, a uh, little under eight foot, about, you know, seven foot uh, and everything. So I've got to make sure that uh, I have a wall that wide or I need to scale things down, right? I do have a wall uh, that's not doing anything right now. Uh, it's not housing anything. It's kind of a background wall that I would like to festive up, you know, uh, and stuff. So, uh, I think, uh, we're going to go with that, you know, but again, 
I could make this a little desktop nativity scene as well too, right? It could be scalable. So keep all this stuff in mind. So it might not be something you want on a big wall. It might be something you want on your desk or your, your kitchen counter or your mantle of your fireplace, whatever, right? All right. So now that we have the parts uh, pretty much laid out and the heights and sizes that uh, I want them to be. Let's make the snowman a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, the fox is there. He's a good size. The presence, a good size. And then the deer. So with these parts being the size that they want to be, now I can go ahead and move them down out of the way because I got to nest them onto my boards and it might take one more than one sheet if I was doing this and I'm doing this I'm going to be laying this out on a four by eight sheet and then I'll break it down into smaller sheets for myself and, and, and other people and stuff but we're gonna we're gonna pretend that we all have a big four by eight machine which we don't right we don't uh, um, but uh, I'm going to show you the initial layout and then from there we can figure out we might need to cut the tree in half and everything and, and it's gonna have uh, a little backer so imagine imagine if you will that this was my tree right so the cell phone here is my tree there's gonna be a board screwed to the back of it so that my other part of the tree can screw to that and it's now a fully full one piece you understand I know that was a weird example with the phones and stuff but um, you know imagine that I'm gonna have like a little nail board if you will screw to the back of one piece so that i can screw another piece to it and uh, make it my big full piece i'm going to be able to break it down right um and everything so uh ho hopefully you understand that so right now we're big but you know things can be small uh so all the parts are going to be cut out separate we got to put the little tenons and stuff on them and then we got to lay out exactly how they're gonna sit on our platform because we have to lay out the notches for our platform and stuff too. Uh, the present, let's move it. So I'm pulling all my parts and pieces down. Okay, so here's all my parts and pieces. Now let's start with the big tree. And here is the fun part. We're gonna put lights in this bad boy. All right, now, Someone said that their lights were about three inches apart. Okay, their lights were three inches, and that plays a role. How your string of lights, how far the lights are apart, uh, plays a role in where your holes are going to be. We're going to be we're going to be making holes to go, you know, for these lights to go into, uh, and everything. And uh, we've got to figure out where we want to drill these holes and stuff. I'm going to show you a very cool and creative way to do that uh, right now. So. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the vector texture tool. Many of you probably don't ever use this. Uh, you probably never used it before, or you may have, who knows, but this vector texture tool creates a array of vectors, a kind of lines of vectors with certain spacing and certain wavelength uh, and, and noise factor and stuff like that to create all kinds of cool texture vectors. And we're going to use it to help us with our Splice plate. Thank you, John Comita Jr. Appreciate you for jumping in with that splice plate, ladies and gentlemen. That back piece that's going to screw so two pieces can get put together. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's a good term. I don't know if it's the correct term, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, it probably is the correct term. I just don't know. Uh, we're gonna create a. We're gonna use the vector creator, the vector texture tool here. Um, to help us with our layout lines of our tree, right? Of our lights. Now, um, I want uh, the spacing of my line spacing from one line to another. I want about six inch spacing, no variation. I want it to be at no variation, six inches. Uh, and I want my amplitude, okay? So the amplitude is from the, the high up of the wave to the lower part of the wave, that distance to the top of the wave to the bottom of this wavelength, right? Uh, that's the amplitude. And I want 4.8 inches, so roughly around there, four, four and a half, four point eight 4.8 is good. Uh, but I want the wavelength to be 24 inches. 
And I don't want any noise. I don't want any crazy noise at all. I just want a nice smooth line, okay? And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have this vector of this tree selected so that when I click preview, it will draw that vector into that tree. Can you kind of see where we're going here, right? Can you see that? Can you guys see that if we zoom in? Can you see the lines that it created? Imagine a string of lights going around and around and around that tree, right? And a nice little wavy string of lights going around. So we've got, you know, these lights and stuff, cool stuff. So now uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to lock that in. And um, on here, I am going to currently right now, all those lines are grouped together. I'm gonna ungroup them. Now I could go over to the edit objects tools for those of you that are actually paying attention to the buttons and the classes and stuff. First row, fifth icon, edit objects, uh, of the first row of the edit objects menu, fifth icon is the undo button. The keyboard shortcut for undo is also the letter U. So when I select this, I have a choice. I can come over here and click this button to ungroup it. Not undo, ungroup, ungroup. Uh, group is the fourth icon, right? Group and ungroup. I could ungroup it this way or I could just hit the letter U for ungroup or the letter G for group, okay? So I wanna ungroup this because I wanna delete some of these lines. I don't want lines, I don't want lights down by my base, okay? And I don't want lights up at the top uh, and everything up here. I think I'm gonna let the first string of lights kind of start here, okay? Because I think I'm gonna go kind of, uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking, I'm really, really thinking about putting a star. I don't know, too much? You gotta tell me, you, you tell me. Uh, probably not that big, but I'm thinking about putting, you know, a Christmas star at the top of the tree, the big tree. And uh, it's gonna have a light in the thinner. I don't know. Think about that, tell me what you think. All right, so I don't want, so I got rid of that line up there as well. I'm gonna undo that. I'll leave that line there just in case I can always delete it later. All right, so here's the next trick. The hole that we're gonna be making for the hole uh, that we're gonna be making for the lights to go into, uh, we need to make the hole the proper size. The star is a must, right? JR, thank you. Um, the hole that we make into the plywood has got to be, you know, either big enough or small enough that the lights can go in. Now, me personally, all right, Janet likes the star, good. Um, uh, me personally, I think, I honestly think that my lights are going to stay in this piece kind of permanently, if you will. They'll be able to break down and, and everything. Uh, they can stand when it gets packed away or make it to where they can come out. Either way, our holes, uh, either the hole is gonna be the right size for the light so it's a nice pressure fit in there or it's gonna be a little bit oversized and you'll hot glue it in or whatever the case may be, right? A star or angel, Brooks Martin says, try the small star. Yep, Ronnie, so, all right, good. So we're gonna go with the star, probably a little bit smaller in size. And I'll show you how we're going to hang that, how it'll hook. It's a neat little thing that we're going to do to hook that. Uh, very cool stuff. And uh, excuse me for a minute. i got to get my sippy cup out. It sounds like a sippy cup when I drink out of it. But um, it's not a sippy cup. All right. Here's the cool part. Now, for my lights, I have determined that I need a 3 8 inch hole. 3 8 inch diameter hole for the string of lights that I'm gonna be using. Now, you can uh, go on Amazon and buy all kinds of different lights and stuff, and they all have different bases and different sizes. You might want big lights, little lights, whatever the case may be. Uh, mine are just a, a standard you know, uh, uh, set of um, uh, Christmas lights. They do have a little bit of a wider head. That's why I need a 3 8 inch hole. Uh, but they're just plain white lights there's no color to them no they're not red and green and blue and yellow and all that stuff i'm festive but i'm not that festive right now for this piece i don't i don't know yet um but i'm gonna go with a solid color so my whole diameter needs to be three eighths 
figure out what your hole diameter be, it needs to be. So this circle right here at the bottom of the screen, I'm just throwing it down there, is going to represent the circle for the holes that need to be cut for my lights. Now, I'm going to select each of the vectors. Remember, I ungrouped them earlier to remove some of the lines and stuff. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and select them back. So I'm going to go through and make sure all of my lines are selected. And if we zoom out, I can just draw a box from right to left, bottom to top, make sure it crosses all those lines and it'll select them. And then I can pick up some of these stragglers. Now, I, even though this line, I'm not going to put a hole here, you're going to see what I'm going to do to clear out some things. But um, the uh, even though there's a line here, I'm still going to select it. Okay, I want all the lines that are going to represent these vectors. I want them all selected. Even this little guy over here. Don't worry about it. We're not putting a hole right there on the tip of that brush. But make sure that all your lines are selected. Got one right here. And we're going to hit the letter G on the keyboard for group. Again, it's over here. It's the fourth icon in that first row over there on the left. But we're going to hit G for group to group all those together. Make sure you didn't miss any and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, phase one complete. Now, phase two, we're going to take our profile of our tree and we're going to offset it inward. Now, I'm going to go a half inch. Okay, I want a half inch uh, kind of clearing, if you will, around you know the inside of my tree where there's no lights, no nothing, no anything. So I'm going to go a half inch you can pick your number, okay? And I want to select a new and I want to offset inward that half inch to create this vector here, okay? Phase two is complete, all right? Now, we're going to take and we're going to select our group of lines. Let me zoom in full size here so you can see what's happening. We're going to take our group of lines and select it first we're going to hold our shift key down and select that offset that we created last. And then we're going to use our trim tool, which is the fourth icon on the second row of edit objects. Looks like a little barber pole. We're going to trim clearing inside the boundary. Now the boundary is the last item we selected. So I had all the lines grouped together. They're one item. They're grouped together. Okay. Select them first. That profile offset that I created selected it last. And so by selecting it last, it has become the boundary. And so I want to clear everything outside of that boundary away, right? So what does that mean? When I click on clear outside of the boundary, hit clear, it's going to redraw my lines and it's going to clear and get rid of everything that is outside of that offset. Okay, it's getting right, got rid of it. You with me? You good? Good, good, good. Cool. All right. So now I can get rid of that offset. I don't need it any longer. I just needed it for my trim factor, right? Uh, but uh, I can go ahead and delete it. I could leave it there. Whatever. I don't care, but I'm getting rid of it. I don't need it. I don't need any extra vectors that I need to worry about or anything. All right. Now, once again, I'm going to reselect the new lines and let me show you a little, let me show you a little, little shortcut here. I'm going to hit undo. Okay. When you do, and I, I undid twice, so I'm back to where before the trim, when I clear inside the boundary and I hit clear, when it clears, my vectors are currently still selected, right? At this point in time, before I click anywhere else, while they're selected, I'm going to hit G on my keyboard to group them together. So I don't have to go back and um, close your tool first and then hit G and group them together. That way I don't have to go back after the fact and select each one individually and regroup it, right? I want to group them together after the trim. So now I'm going to delete that offset. And when I select this group of lines, they're already grouped together. I don't, I don't have to worry about it. I did that after the trim. They were selected. The new lines were selected that were redrawn. 
hit G or group, whatever you want to do, group them together so they're ready for the next step. Okay, here's the next step. We're going to take and select our circle down here. My, in my case, it's a 3 8 inch diameter circle. We're going to hold the shift key down and select our group of lines. And we're going to come over to the copy along vectors tool. Now, for those of you uh, that are new to the software, it's in the offset and layout down at the bottom. And it is the fourth icon from the left, copy along vectors. So it copies the first item you select along the path of the second item that is selected. And in my case, these lines here. So we're going to open that up. Now, I could copy the object. I could copy circles. I could specify a specific space between the objects, which is very important. That's what we want. Or I could put just a, I want a number, a certain number of, of circles, right? In my case, I want to put a space I want to specify the distance between copies in my case three inches right i haven't measured my lights but according to one of the gentlemen who measured his lights three inches was the spacing right measure your lights right so in that case i want to force the even spacing and i want three inches in between and i'm going to hit copy okay and that is going to put circles along those paths Spaced every three inches apart. What? What? Oh, cool. man, that's cool, right? All right, now, my line vectors here, I don't need those lines visible anymore. I don't want to delete them in case I need to change something. So I'm going to go ahead and move them to a new layer, and I'm going to call this my whole light vector path or whatever, my whole light path or my, my light hole path, light whole path and I'm going to turn the visibility off on it and I'm going to click OK so it goes away and there are my vector hole positions for the lights that are going to go in there right cool so that tree will look like it has a nice little string of lights going around it remember thinking we're thinking we're working two dimensionally but we're thinking three dimensionally right um uh the fifth element you didn't miss the live we are still live ladies and gentlemen we are still live so the fifth element we are live right now so come in and watch um you didn't miss a thing we are one hour into the live all right so now I'm going to take all of my circles, not counting my master circle down here. That He can go away now. We'll leave them there just for a second. But I'm going to take all my circles and I'm going to hit G to group them together. So they're all grouped together. So when I click on one, they're all selected. That way when I create my toolpath, I can just click on it and create the toolpath. Okay? Cool beans. All right. Now, whew, that was a mouthful. Right. So what do you think of that? We use the create vector texture path to create our lines. Right. We used an offsetted vector to trim our lines to, you know, about a half inch in from the border of the tree. And then we use the copy along vector tool to copy our circle spacing evenly that three inch spacing all the way around to create our light holes for our lights. And this could apply to anything, right? Anything like if you're putting lights on anything Christmassy, right? So imagine if you had the word Merry Christmas cut out, you know, an MDF or whatever, or wood, plywood and all, like, like you're gonna hang it on the wall, but you wanted to put lights in the Merry Christmas. You could do the same thing. You know, you have a vector path, the center line, of the letter M, the E, the R, the R, the Y, and whatever. And you could have that circle follow the path, spacing evenly between each hole, whatever spacing you need. And you could put lights and light up your words, right? It could be like Vegas style, right? Cool. All right. All right. Oh my God, that's good stuff. Okay. And that's water, ladies and gentlemen. It's not vodka. <laughs> All right, so 
Uh, let's go ahead and move some things out of our way, out of our visual. visual. So we'll go over here, get these, go over here. You could have different trees, whatever the case may be. Let's move those over there. All right, so now I need to focus on the bottom of this tree, okay? Here's the deal. This tree is six foot tall, okay? 48 inches wide, half inch plywood. I am not going to trust this tree to stick into the top of a uh, top with a little tenon, okay? I'm actually going to uh, straight have a straight away here. It's gonna bring that down closer to the base, I don't care. Uh, I'm gonna have a straight away down there and um, that is going to, uh, we're going to uh, create a little splice plate, if you will, uh, uh, but a little plate that's gonna come out of the top of our piece and our tree is gonna actually bolt to it because it's gonna be a lot of weight. So we're gonna use, you know, down at the bottom, we'll use uh, some machine screws and bolts and nuts, you know, uh, to hold it in. Now, the animals and all that stuff, they're just going to stick into the top of the base. No big deal. But the big tree and the little tree, we're going to mount those. And if you saw that, if you, uh, um, if you saw that video, uh, you know, that uh, kind of gave my inspiration, you can kind of see how he did his trees, which is a brilliant idea uh, and everything. But so to finish this off, I need to finish the tree. Let's go into our node editing. And I think I'm just gonna kinda uh, come right across from this point, cut the vector there, all the way to this point, cut the vector there. And I'm going to uh, remove this lower section of this tree. I'm also gonna remove, I'll ungroup and remove the circles that aren't part of it, uh, you know, the lights and everything. But what I want to do is I want to join this with a straight line, but then I got to straighten it out, right? So we're going to go back into node editing in just a second, but we're going to go to the join with a straight line. That's the second icon, last row of edit objects, join with a straight line. We're going to close that off. And then I'm going to go back into node editing mode and I'm going to take this node, right? Um, Actually, this node is the one I want to align to. This is the node I want to align to. I'm going to select it first. It's going to be red. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select shift and this node last. And I'm going to hit the letter Y. Y is up and down. X is left to right. I need this line to go up and down to straighten out. I want it to be even and straight all the way across. So I want to hit the letter Y and make sure that that line is straight across. Cool beans. Cool beans. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to go into my circles and I'm going to remove some circles that I don't need. So ungroup U first, U. Hold the shift key down and I'm going to select the three circles that I don't want. I'm going to hit G to group the remaining circles that are still selected back together. And then I'm going to come in here and delete those three circles. Okay, simple enough. All right, and um, all right, we got a spammer that came in. Uh, let's bear with me a second. Let me see if I can remove. Um, that spammer gave to me. Okay. All right, so I've been looking. I've been looking at these for about a month now. I think I'm going to make one. There you go. Cool. Well, I'm going to provide these files for free. You can do whatever you want with them. They'll be a, it'll be for a free download and stuff. All right, now we're going to do this the second tree, kind of similar to the first. But before we do that, I want to kind of create my base and my mounting method, right? So I'm going to draw a rectangle and. Uh, I'm going to have a piece corners and everything in. And this 
if you will, let me let me bring my base, right? This this is going to represent we're buffing again, buffering again. Sorry. We're buffering again, buffering again, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. We're buffering again. Um, I'm going to let me bring my base up. Now, this rectangle down at the bottom, let me make it skinnier so it looks more representative. This is going to be my plywood top, my flat 16 inch by 7 foot, whatever it is, top. And I can cut it, you know, on the table saw, I can cut it on the CNC, whatever the case may be, but that's my top. So we're looking at it from a side view. All right. So imagine that, use your imagination. This part here is going to sit down into the base and I'm going to have it uh, right where it's where, where it belongs. And there's going to be a tenon. Let's go to node editing. I'm going to insert a point. Insert a point right here and another point right there. Over here, I'm gonna insert a point and another point. And the two inside points, I'm going to select them and I'm just gonna use my down arrow to bring them down. Um, they're gonna be three quarters of an inch. Don't worry, I'll get the exact size here in just a second. But uh, what I'm going to do now is focus one at a time. And on this point, when I bring, oh, not that one, <laughs> on this point here, uh, when I have it in position and I bring it straight down, I want to bring it straight down. Um, I want to, my distance, you know, from my line here, uh, I want to come down. 2330 seconds, 0.71875, because I'm using plywood, right? And I'll edge band my plywood and all that stuff, but uh, three quarter inch plywood is what I'm gonna use for the base. I want a hefty base. I'm not gonna use half inch for that. So that's 0.71875, uh, and that's what I want to go to. So uh, on my distance here, if I type in 0.71875 and hit enter, okay? So it'll bring that down to that distance automatically. Now, I'm gonna take this node here and I'm simply going to align it to the other nodes to help get me straightened out, right? So here we go. So first, I'll select this node first, this node last. So always the one you want to align to first and the one you want to move or align last, okay? So this one last, I'm gonna hit the letter X, left to right, to pull that into alignment, okay? Now I'm gonna select this one first, that's the one I want to align to, because that's the one that's the correct size, and then I'm going to hold the shift key and select this one last, and this line needs to go up or down, up and down, not up or down, up and down, up and down, so I'm gonna hit the letter Y on the keyboard to pull that into alignment, okay? Straighten that out. Cool beans, cool beans. Okay, now on the part, when this part gets cut out, now this part is actually gonna be a piece that gets cut out too eventually and everything. Um, there's gonna be another, we're gonna put another one of these over here. Uh, and um, it doesn't have to be uniform, it doesn't have to be, I mean, you could be, if like if your OCD kicks in and says, okay, my other tenon has to be the same size, same spacing, same everything on the other side as it is this side, then do that, right? Um, we can, uh, I'll show you an easy way to make that happen. But um, uh, if not, just put the, you know, the points in and the nodes wherever you want. Now, I did all that with node editing just to show you a little bit of node editing. Thank you, Jim G. I appreciate you for that uh, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, I greatly appreciate that. And uh, man, I really appreciate that. Now, the, I did all that with node editing to show you a little bit, give you a little taste of node editing. Now let's do it a different way. Okay, here's the other way. So 
let's grab this part. Let's pull it up out of here so you can see what's about to happen, the magic that's about to happen here. Um, the other way I could have done it is I could have taken and drawn a rectangle, however long and however wide I want it, right? So in this case, the height is going to be 0 0.71875, 0 0.71875. And the length could be whatever length I want it to be. I'll just go six inches, okay? And I'm going to click apply and there's my little tenon, right? Now, I can go ahead and bring that rectangle and put it into place where I want it to be, right? I'm not saying this is where it's going to go. I'm just showing you uh, where it's going to be. And then I have two choices in this matter. Number one, I could trim with the scissors, my scissor tool. I could come over and trim away my lines to uh, create that closed off piece. And of course, it's going to work with me there. It does not like that trim. Let me let me. It needs a little bit of an overlap. I'm gonna man. I gotta. I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit, like microscopic. You know, that's good. And trim, trim. Okay, to create that tenon. That's one way, right? Draw the rectangle, create that overlap. Second way is I could have, uh, let me get rid of that overlap there. Bring those two parts and touch them together like that and use the weld tool to weld those two parts together, right? Quicker way, right? Instead of all the clicks with the scissors and all that stuff, right? Weld the two pieces together. All right, so that's two ways to create that tenon. Or let me undo that all together. And let's say that your OCD is like, no, dude, I have to have that tenon's got to be like, it's got to be the same size, same space, all that wonderful jazz. Cool, no problem. We're going to go to node editing and we're going to, uh, for this example, I'm going to just delete this span right over here, kind of disconnect it from there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut this vector right here, cut it right on the corner. All right, so that guy, that rectangle is all standalone-ish and everything. Now, my part, right, my part here, there is a, uh, a virtual center to this piece. Um, let me get out of node editing here. There is a center to this piece right here, and it's a snap point, right? So I could draw a line on my snap point And that line did not land on my snap point there. Uh, let's grab it and snap it. Is it going to be right on that? Let me find my... Yeah. And that should be it. Oh, I was way off. Landing here, way off, dude. Right. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry. That center line, right? Cool beans. Now that I have that center line, I could take this part, hold down the shift key, select that line last, mirror with my mirror tool, and click the button that says flip about line. Well, it'll put it over there so it's equal spacing and everything, right? Then I could come over here and I could select this, select this, and join with a straight line to put that back, right? And then over here, I could come in and da, 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 take my scissors or my weld tool or whatever and cut that, all right? However you wanna do it, it's up to you. Those are three ways that we created the same darn part, right? I just wanna kinda uh, uh, show you the different ways. So we, we created that little tenon with node editing the first time around, that's a long way around. The second time we drew a rectangle the size we wanted and we did a little weld or we used our scissors to trim. The third way is if we already had one, why draw what you can copy? So we just, you know, cut it free and mirror it over to where it belongs and then connect everything back together, right? Just different ways from point A to point B. Okay, cool. All right, so we don't need this center line circle anymore. We can get rid of it. Now, imagine if you will, that I'm using a quarter inch 
0.25 router bit to cut out these parts, okay? And when this router bit comes and cuts, you know, and it's cutting around here and everything, it's gonna create a radius right there when it cuts on that piece of plywood. That means when it goes to sit down into the tenon, or the tin, that tenon, when it goes to sit down into the mortise, it's gonna be kind of, it's not gonna pop down in there and be nice and flat because there's gonna be a little bit of an arc right here on this inside corner on all of these inside corners, all four of them, okay? We don't want that. So we have to put what's called a fillet into place. Now, the reason why I'm going so far into, I apologize, um, why I'm going so far uh, into detail on this because it's gonna kind of be rinse and repeat for when we start laying out the tenons for our other pieces, right? So I'm just going into detail here and then we can just go be a little bit faster on the other parts and stuff. So uh, I need to make sure that, you know, I've got this piece, this base piece here. You'll see what we're gonna use that for in just a minute. We're gonna do two of them for the tree, the big tree and the small tree. But um, I need to put my fillets on the inside corner so that the router bit has a place to go uh, as it goes that corner to create kind of almost like a square corner, if you will. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Uh, so my fillet tool, it's gonna to be what's called a dog bone fillet. And I'm gonna be using a quarter inch end mill to cut my parts out. So I'm gonna use an eighth inch radius, right? On that quarter inch end mill is eighth inch radius. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put a fillet on the inside corner. So when that router bit comes and cuts, it has a place to go as it comes and cuts here. And when I set this piece down, um, when I set this piece down and into my mortise, well, that was a bad thing. When I into my mortise, you know, I have that square kind of corner, you know, and everything. You're going to see a little bit of that little opening and all, but that's all, you're not going to see it. It's no big deal, right? But we need that nice square corner. We can't have that radius there because if we would have done that differently, right? If I would have come in and let's say that, whoops. I'm going to do a normal fillet, eighth inch, right? So if I would have cut that, it would actually look like this, rounded, and that's like fitting a round peg into a square hole, right? It's not going to happen. It's going to sit up, you know, and everything. It's not going to be able to sit down in that square hole unless I smooth out the corner and all that stuff. So we want to fill it, a dog bone fillet, okay? Dog bone fillet. And the dog bone fillet is used for creating clearance on internal uh, corners uh, uh, where the slot and the uh, part are the, uh, you know, have to, where two pieces have to fit together. Okay, so eighth inch radius, let's go one dog bone fillet there, one dog bone fillet there, one there, and one there. Okay, so my part will now fit down into the base. And of course this base is only gonna be 0 0.71875 high. Uh, so let me resize that just visually. 0.71875. And um, okay, so when it fits in, uh, when it fits in and everything, it will go in. Now, notice I'm sitting a little proud, and that's fine because this is going to be it's all open under there in the in the in the stand, so it's good. All right. So now, what is this purpose of this? This is going to stick in here, and my tree. Oops again so I can break it down or I may glue them in permanently and the, those the two tree pieces those will stay in but the trees can be disassembled from it and it'll still flat pack in a sense right all right cool um Michael Murphys he says alternately you could oversize mortise quarter inch larger in width and then accommodate the rounded corners I need a tight fit I can't have these pieces wobbling and everything like that I need a nice friction fit uh, in there and everything and, and stuff. So I can't have any play. So there's no oversizing. 
Uh, I'm going to do, uh, but you know, if they, if you could have that kind of tolerance or uh, slop or whatever the case, or whatever, however you want to word it, then yes, Michael, that would work. Uh, otherwise, I need a nice mortise and tenon fit, uh, nice friction fit, and everything going in. I don't want any, uh, I don't want any oversized anything. So I'm going to put my fillets in there, and uh, they're that that'll solve that. But yes. So if you do have that kind of tolerances that you can deal with, then absolutely. All right. So I need, uh, my bolts are going to, they, they don't need to be very big. Uh, quarter 20 or, you know, 5, 16, 18. Whatever, you know, whatever, uh, whatever, um, uh, whatever size you want to do. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with uh, quarter 20. So, um, I'll take and, uh, I'll throw one there, one in the center and do I want to mirror it to the other side for you folks? Let's see here. Uh, let's take a line and draw it right down the right down let's take that line and snap it to the center we'll take this circle hold down our shift key select that line and mirror flipping about the line right create that copy there cool beans okay so that'll be drill holes uh, on both parts so those vectors are not only they're gonna when I do Copy and paste, control C, control V. I now have six circles there, two, two on, you know, three on top of the, uh, of the other three. Uh, while they're selected, I'm gonna select my tree again. And then I'm gonna use the up arrow key to pull that up. There's those three holes. And uh, they will be part of that. They're gonna get drilled into that tree, right? Uh, I will make them uh, part of the group of that tree because all the tree vectors are done and I've got everything selected and kind of grouped together right now just to keep everything nice and organized right and for this one so I don't those circles and all don't get moved around and all that stuff I'll go ahead and group them together so that when I move that part around uh, it's good to go right cool okay Whew. Lord have mercy all right, so that takes care of my big tree holes and its mounting plate. We'll call it the mounting plate. All right, so that's that. The next tree. Now, I'm going to have a string of lights into uh, this tree as well. Um, I thought about almost not putting lights in it uh, and everything, you know, thinking it might be a little bit too much, but... I think because it's going to be in front of the other tree and everything, having some lights in it uh, because they're, the other ones are going to kind of be blocked. And uh, and all, uh, I, I'm not removing the holes and the lights from where the other one's going to be because there's going to be space in between. They're not going to be like right on top of each other. There's going to be space in between. But I'm not removing those holes and lights on the big tree where the, the littler tree is going to be covering it. Because when people are looking at it from the side, you know, not just the front and all, I want the lights to be there, right? So I'm not getting rid of any light holes or anything like that where, you know, this tree is. Um, I could, I could say, you know what? Nah, this is gonna be a wall piece up against the wall. People aren't gonna be looking at it from the side. So where the, you know, where the tree is gonna be sitting in front, I could take those holes that are in that back tree and put them in the front tree and be done with it. That kind of, you know what I mean? how you know whatever your thinking is could be whatever you want it to be um uh, in all uh but for me the little tree is going to have its own little lights and own little path cool you guys good with that all right awesome all right only seven more to go let me know uh john john what seven more to go uh let me know what's seven more what seven more what uh and uh um, again, uh, thank you, Jim G and, uh, everybody. I really appreciate you on the super chats and stuff. Um, 
the uh, <clears throat> uh, Bernie and uh, Chris, you guys, thank you. All right, let's see here. We've got uh, our little tree. Let's get back into the game of things here. Um, we're going to rinse and repeat. So vector texture lines, same spacing I'm going to do uh, here with this vector selected, same spacing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, preview that. Click OK. All right. I'm going to offset, rinse and repeat. So these are the same steps we did a minute ago. Offset inward, half inch. I'm going to take my texture lines, select them first, select that offset last, and I'm gonna trim, clearing inside the boundary. Remember the boundary is the last item you selected, okay? While after, soon, immediately after trimming, I'm going to group these together because they're selected. I'm going to hit G to group those together, or I could go over to the group tool, either one, but I want to group them together and get them ready for the next phase. Now, once I've grouped them, I don't need this vector again. I'm getting rid of vectors that I don't need, so they're not in my way. Um, if I know that it's a half inch offset, if I ever need to recreate it, I could. So I'm going to hit delete and get rid of that. And I'm going to take my circle, 3 8 inch circle, 0.375. And I'm going to select it first, select this path last, and go to the copy along vector tool, rinse and repeat. Inch, uh, three inch spacing in between, in this case, I'll remeasure for my lights and all that stuff before I do my final piece, but we're going to go based off of the measurement uh, our buddy took. And uh, who did that, by the way? Let me, bear with me just a second here. Um, it was John, John committed. Thank you. John John measured his life, said it was three inches. So uh, we're gonna click copy. All right, look at that quick layout and everything, cool beans. And um, uh, there's gonna be some, you know, uh, lines and stuff we'll get rid of, some circles we don't want and all that stuff. But once again, I'm gonna right click and move to a new layer. And this layer is gonna be my small tree, tree light path. And I'm gonna turn that vector off to hide it. Y'all still with me on that? We all good? Okay, same stuff. I'm gonna come in here and go into node editing and pick a place. Remember the base is gonna go straight across. Uh, so for me, I'm just gonna pick this spot here and cut the vector right there on that node, right across, somewhat straight across. I'll straighten it out in a minute, but I'm gonna find a place over here and cut that vector. And I'm gonna get rid of, hit delete to get rid of the remaining part. I'm going to get out of node editing mode and join with a straight line, that open vector, join with a straight line to close that off. Okay. And I do want to make sure that it is a straight line up and down. So I'm going to pop over to node editing mode. I'm going to align to this node. I'll select it first and then I'll select this node last. Hold that shift key and select that one last. And I'm going to hit the letter Y on the keyboard just to make sure that it's aligned straight across. Cool beans. And then I'm going to get rid of some holes that I don't want for the lights. You know, I'll get rid of these. And let me decide here. Let me debate, 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 debate. I think. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of. I'm going to get rid of these two and this one. Can't really, uh, you know, we got our spacing and everything, so 
I'm good with that. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that one too because my part that gets screwed is going to get screwed right here. So that's good. I'm going to get rid of those. Okay. So um, once again, I'm going to come in and uh, I'm actually going to, you know, take this part right here that was created. I'm going to hold down the control key and drag a copy of it over here, uh, you know, because I've already got it and everything. And uh, what I'm going to do is, you know, pretty much everything is kind of the same. Uh, I'm not going to need, you know, uh, the smaller tendons and stuff, and I don't need it to be this long or this big. So I'm going to ungroup. This is my copy, the original still over there for my big tree. For the small one, I'm going to just manipulate what I've got currently have. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to select this part here and I'm going to come in uh, and go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector right here on the corner and cut the vector here on the corner. Okay. And um, I'll end up removing a section of this in just a moment. But what I want to do first is I want to take this get out of node editing mode and I'm gonna just size it down Okay, and I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm gonna actually just delete this span right here. And I'm gonna take this section, get out of node editing mode. I'm gonna take this section and I'm gonna move it and snap it over to here, right on that corner. I'm gonna take this section, snap it over here on that corner and I don't need these tenons to be this long but I do not want to change that radius okay I don't want to change that radius by any means and if I sit here and just scale this there's a possibility that I could change the shape of that right uh, and everything so I'm gonna just kind of do it my way uh, I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete this span here. Over here, I'm going to delete the span. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and use the arrow keys on my keyboard. Get out of node editing mode. And I'm just going to move him over. I'm going to move this one over. And again, if your OCD kills you and all that stuff, I'll show you exactly how to move exact spacing, but I'm just moving them over. Uh, and I could very well now select this vector and this vector and join with a straight line. This vector and this vector and join with a straight line. This vector and this vector and join with a straight line, right? To connect it all back together. And then this and this uh, will select this part here and we will join not with a straight line we will join those two vectors into one closed vector right so now I have this piece here but let's say that oh my god Lane, you're driving me nuts with this everything being not the right size and all that stuff and blah 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 you know and all that things and that's fine let me show you what we got going on here so let's back up to where we were okay so here we go. Exact movements and measurements. I'm going to take this uh, this kind of shepherd's hook right here, right? And I'm going to drag it over and snap it to my line here, right? And I'm going to take this shepherd's hook and grab it on the end and snap it 
Let's try that again. Grab it on the end and snap it to there, right, on that one. Now, one at a time, I'll do a move. So let's go to the Move tool. And I'm going to do a relative move. And this one's going to be a positive number because it's going to the right. I'm going to move over two and a half inches, 2.5. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit more than that. So let's go 4.5. Okay. And then I'm going to take this one. And it's going to be a negative number because it's going to the left. Negative. 4.5 and then I'm going to select this hold down that shift key and select this and join with a straight line to connect it then this one join with a straight line to connect it this one join with a straight line to connect it and then select this part here and go to join to select those two vectors and close them into one now they're the same size and the same spacing and all that wonderful jazz that everybody's happy and all that great stuff, right? So, and uh, um, why not just copy the first one you made earlier and change the size? Well, the first one that I made earlier, if I change the size and everything, when I scale it down or up, it's also gonna scale the fillets and I would need the fillets to, be, to remain that eighth inch radius, right? Now I could very well size it down and then just undo the fillets and redo the fillets uh, and everything, easy enough. So what someone's asking me, and let me show you exactly what they're saying. Why not take the first one, let me close this tool. Why not take the first one and just size it down? So let's say I want to size it down. Well, before I size it down, I would need to, because I need those fillets to be eighth inch radius. So the first thing that I would do is I would ungroup that. This is my original, the first one, right? I would come into my fillet tool, my dog bone fillets, and I would come and remove, 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 remove those fillets, okay? And then I could come in and I could size that down. I'm gonna keep the same height and everything. I just wanna size everything in, right? So. I could come to my size tool and I'm gonna unlink the X and Y. Uh, I'll keep the same height, but I'll size it down, let's say 18 inches, right? Bring it down in size. And once I've done that, then I could come back to my fillet tool and simply put those fillets back into place, right? Does that seem like it could be easier for you guys and girls rather than using the nodes and doing all the mirror and the copying and stuff that I did? Now you know two ways to do it, right? So A to B, getting from point A to B, there's multiple ways to get there. I'm just trying to show you kind of the most complicated way so that you, when it gets to the easier way, you know, you know, right? I want you, I want to teach you node editing and all that. It's not about the design and what we're doing. It's cool what we're doing and stuff. It's about how we're doing it, you know? And so I'm trying to, you know, giving you a little bit of intermediate, beginner, intermediate, advanced lessons and things like that. So, but we could have just, done that and accomplished the same goal, right? Cool beans. Um, the, uh, uh, let's see here. She cuts them by hand, but Barbara Holm does these for all different holidays they, uh, to get ideas. Cool. Um, and uh, on TikTok, nice. Uh, Michael Murphy, also draw one half of the uh, support board and then mirror say the right half, uh, and then join the vectors, right? You could do that too as well. So cut it in half. quarter inch diameter holes. They're ovals now because I squished that part down. That's why I kind of don't like doing it that way. Uh, it just creates more work for me. Uh, so I got to go back to my 0.25 and let's go in here and snap that hole there. Snap that hole there and snap that hole there. And then we'll come in and delete the bad ones, right? Either way, don't care how you get there as long as you get there. All right. Now, the um, if you also still wanted the you know two inch radius instead of this squished radius here, 
uh, and everything. You could remove this and redo your radiuses, whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, it's just a support board. Okay, so either way you get to your point uh, is is fine by me. Uh, just, you know, um, get there. All right, let's go here and here. And I'm going to take this circle. This is my quarter inch hole. And I'm going to go ahead and snap it into, let me find my center right there okay and then I'm going to draw a line that line just represents kind of a center line for me because I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold down my control key and drag a copy over and uh, pick a spot any spot I don't care uh, I'm going to drag a hole over and then I'm going to hold down my shift key and select that line and I'm going to flip it about that line. I'm going to flip a copy about that line and then I'm going to get rid of that line. All right. So there's my three holes for that. Need to copy and paste them. So select all three of those. Control C, Control V. While they're selected, I'm going to select my part. I'll do the part first this time. And I'm going to use uh, the down arrow key and just move it down. Group it together. G for group or hit the group button. So that's that. And this one, I'll, I don't want a light here at the top of the tree. We'll get rid of that. All right, so let's select all of these and group that together. All right, so there's my two trees and my two bases. Okay, so... Now, it's going to be very important for me to kind of lay these out. I've got them grouped together, but kind of lay them out. Uh, and um, <laughs> that part that I sized down and squished and all that wonderful jazz and everything, that was my original part from over here. Uh, da -da -da -dum, da -dum -dum. All right, what size is this part? Uh, let's see here. This is 3.4884 inches tall. So, really quickly, I'm going to draw a rectangle. 3.4884 inches tall by, I'm just going to go 35. Not 35. Um, bear with me a second. Let me move this tree out of the way. All right, one more time. Size. Let's get this size down. Uh, fill it. Normal fillet. I'm going to go with a two inch radius here and here. My um, little tenons, they are 0.71875 inches tall by, I'll go six inches. Cool beans. I'm going to draw a line down the center. I'm going to select this and mirror this. So you're just seeing me recreate a part uh, a different way. So I'm going to mirror that, flipping it about the line. I'm going to take another line tool and I'm going to draw a line straight across 90 degrees here. And then I'm going to take my scissors and trim this corner away, this line, this line, and that line. That line and that line. Get rid of that center line. And then I'm going to put my dog bone fillets 
with an eighth inch radius back on those inside corners. Okay, I'm going to take the big tree and mind you, it's gonna be kind of snapped on here like this. Uh, I'm gonna take those fillets out. Oops. I'm gonna take those fillets out, the normal fillets that I had, the two inch fillets. I'm gonna go into node editing. And I'm just gonna use the down arrow key on my keyboard to bring this down to my appropriate size here. And then I'm gonna put those fillets back in. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna ungroup my Christmas tree. So I can deselect these three circles for the moment and group it back together. I don't wanna have to keep selecting and deselecting, so group and ungroup. I wanna take these three circles and I'm gonna hit copy and paste, control C, control V, or copy and paste is up here at the top of the software. Uh, and that way I can take my copies in that shape and bring it back down. These lines can get removed. All right, and then I can take my tree, ungroup it, add in the three circles, hold that shift key down, and then regroup it, G. G and U, those keyboard shortcuts make things faster. So, long story short, I now have my parts back <laughs> when I resize. The reason why I had to redo that is when I resized this one, I forgot to make a copy of it. I actually was resizing that original one and uh, screwed myself up. Okay, so that was a little bit of a waste of our time, but there we go. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit save on this Christmas scene so we don't lose any of this work and stuff. Now, let's get back to business here. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna take, I'm gonna grab this part right by the center circle here and I'm gonna snap it to the center of this circle so it lines up into place, okay? And I'm just a little off on that. I should have known that when I grouped it together. Uh, let me ungroup. And let me deselect this bad boy right here. Let me get him down onto, uh, let me get him down into position. He's supposed to be right snapped on that line there. Beautiful. All right, one more time. Let me select those three circles and that and group that back together. Now I was able to do that because this tree, the rest of this tree was all grouped and everything. And um, I was able to uh, be able to select those, you know, this part and make that alteration and stuff uh, without accidentally selecting the wrong vectors and things. But to getting back to what I was originally doing before I noticed that mistake, is I'm gonna grab the center of this circle and I'm gonna move and snap it up to the center of that circle. That puts this position, this into its position. I'm gonna grab this guy, grab it by the center of the circle and I'm gonna move it up. Let me zoom out when I do that. Grab it by the center of that circle and I'm gonna move and snap it to the center of that one. Oh, I missed my snap. There we go, okay. And that way I can start laying things out. So this is gonna go my big tree and my little tree is gonna go there. Okay. Now remember these are you gotta think three dimensionally on a two dimensional space. There's spacing in between. I got I'm stacking them on top of each other because I, I gotta start getting ready to lay out my holes and my pattern and everything. So I just need to kind of get everything positioned. That's gonna be the most uh, difficult part of all this from this point on. Okay, uh, next, let's go ahead and get my platform here, which is gonna be my flat board again. We're looking at a side view uh, and let's get it into position. So we're gonna snap it 
right here. And um, again, my, my, my piece is, uh, you know, going to be seven foot. So let's go um, into the size tool and I'm going to go seven and a uh, comma and hit equals on the keyboard. So 84 inches by 71.875, the thickness of the plywood. That's my part. Okay. Get it snapped into position and all that wonderful jazz. Cool. Now I need to lay out my other guys and girls and snowman and all that stuff, the animals and all, because I got to draw their tenons. We are trying to race through this. Hopefully you guys are staying on key. Give me a thumbs up if you understand what's happening here. Okay. If you understand what's going on, you're following along. My snowman, I need to straighten him out at the bottom. I need to straighten him out. So node editing on the snowman. And he's got all these nodes down here. Well, I only need to go from point A to point B. So I'm going to select the nodes that I don't need. And I'm going to hit the letter D on the keyboard to get rid of them. If there's any other nodes there, I'm going to hit the letter D to get rid of those. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't delete them, right click and go down to uh, do, 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 do. delete point. Delete point. Okay. Now. Here, I need these guys flattened out, lining up, and I got to pick which one I want to choose. I'm going to choose the one on the right to be my aligned. Make sure you turn off the anchor. Hold that shift key down and don't have the anchor selected, just that one node. That's the one I want to align to. The other side is the one I want to align, and I need to go up and down. So I'm going to hit the letter Y on the keyboard to pull that straight. Okay beans. All right. He just needs a tenon. One tenon for him. So my tenon is going to be 0.71875 inches tall. That's how thick the plywood is. So 0.71875. And I'm just going to go a straight 10 inches. Okay. 71.875. It likes to round up. That's fine. If it does, no big deal. All right. Get it into position. I'm happy with that. It's good for me. So I'm going to select these two parts and weld them together into one. Okay. Now that did not weld. And let's find out why. I am overlapped. Let me make sure this guy is a closed vector. He should be. He is. So let's select those two again and weld. Weld. All right. It's going to fight me. And so it's going to fight me because... It's not quite, not quite an overlap. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm like seriously gonna like pull it up just, that was even too much for me. Let me zoom really, zoom in really tight. I just wanna just, just, just get past that line. I mean, just a, like thousandths of an inch. And I'm gonna weld that together. Okie dokie, okie dokie. All right, let's go ahead and put our fillets in there. Dog bone fillet, eighth inch radius, because we're using a quarter inch end mill to cut that part out. So we're going to throw one here on the inside corner and here. All right, snowman's done. He's going to go into place. Let's stick him into position. Get him snapped into position. And I like him just like that that. Cool beans. All right. Next, let's get uh, Bucky over here. Let's get him over in a position. He's going to be on the far side here. Now, my buck has some issues. You know, he's got one paw that's kind of, you know, everything's kind of oblonged and, and odd and all that stuff. Um, I, I want... Um, I want uh, 
the feet to kind of all, you know, make contact and stuff. I don't want a piece just floating in the air and everything and all. So, you know, um, I want it kind of sitting down where, you know, the tenons are in uh, and, um, and everything uh, and, and all. So I'm going to bring it back up to here. And what I'm going to do for him, because I'm not going to try to rotate him. I don't want him all crooked and all that stuff. You know, I don't want to rotate him to get him to fit and all that stuff and everything. Uh, I want him exactly like he is because uh, he's, he's, he's straight up and down. He's where he's supposed to be. But I'm going to ungroup him. Okay, so he's a dotted line here. And what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to take a kind of a straight line path. I'm going to go right across here. I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to delete this point, but I'm going to delete this span. Span is a line or an arc or a curve between two nodes. And I'm going to use my extend tool to extend this vector to this line. And this vector to this line. Okay. That one was kind of facing in. That's why it kind of shot back that way. I'm not mad at it. Okay. Every other vector already kind of comes into place and stuff here. I'd like to have a little bit more of a foothold. Here, so I'm going to go back into node editing on this one and I'm going to delete this point and this point and I'm going to delete this span and I'm going to use my extend tool and extend this line down to here and this line down to here. Okay, and then I'm going to use my scissor tool to trim away homeboy's hoof here. Okay, cool beans. Now, I kept the center connected. I kept the center connected and everything because I'll end up, uh, this is going to be just one piece of, you know, wood with, with a tenon in it and everything, but uh, I'm going to draw it kind of from here. So again, my tenons need to be 0.71875. Um, not by 10 inches long. I don't think I need 10 inches, but I'm going to come here. And if you're if you if you're like man, hey, just go all the way across the whole thing and just just one big tenon. Hey man, I'm all for it, right? We could do it. Doesn't matter. So we could go all the way across since we you know took the time to uh, um, we took the time to uh, straighten out the hooves. Why not, right? Um, whatever whatever fancies your tickle. Okay. Uh, and basically I'm just going to, this is going to be one big old tenon, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, it's just going to sit right down into the slot and it's all going to be connected. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim, not that. Come on now, boy. Hold on a second. Let me close that. Let me get that. Okay. I'm going to take my scissors. Trim there, there. Okay, cool beans. Now, there is um, the, uh, that's going to get cut out. That's going to get cut out. That's going to get cut out. All that's wonderful jazz. Um, there are no inside corners in here. And I kind of want to create an inside corner. Kind of like it's begging me. It's like, it's like begging me to create a little inside corner uh, just to create that little tenon, you know, so the slot's not going right to the end. Uh, you know, and everything. So I'm going to just 
uh, literally kind of take, let me go back into note editing here, and I'm gonna take and cut the vector right here, and I'm gonna grab these two nodes, and I'm gonna use my left, my right arrow key, and I'm gonna move that over just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna join it back together with a straight line. Join with a straight line. Okay, and I'm gonna put my little dog bone fillet, eighth inch radius, right there. Okay, I have some faith. All right, let's do the same thing over here. Let's uh, go back into node editing. I'm gonna cut the vector right here. And I'm gonna take the, uh, now notice I got this going on right here. I got a little bit of a, a catastrophe right there. So let's do some trimming. Let's get rid of some crap that doesn't belong here. So that's gotta go. And that's gotta go. Okay, so we're gonna go into node editing. I'm gonna delete this span. Oh, make sure you choose the right thing. Delete the span. I'm gonna select these two nodes right here and use the left arrow key. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Uh, pick a spot, any spot, I don't care. And then I'm gonna join that back with a straight line. And I'm gonna use my dog bone fillet. Throw that bad boy right there. All right, let's get Bucky into place. Let's group him together, all his vectors. Group, G for group. And let's get him sitting down into position. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, alrighty. And I am just a bit high right here on this vector. Right there, let me get him down onto the line. All right, so I've got, I cut some uneven vectors and everything and all. When I was trimming lines earlier, I trimmed the wrong lines away. How do we fix that? It's no big deal. We go into, we ungroup Bucky here, go into node editing. And we simply take these two nodes and snap them up to there on that line. And this one right here, these three nodes, we pull them up. And the reason why I did the three is I need that eighth inch fillet to stay the same. So pull them up into place. Okay. And we are good. So we can select him back, all of his vectors, and group him back together. He is all good to go. Group. All right. So he's going to be there. You guys and girls still with me? Wake up. Wake up. All right. Let me see what we have here. Um, let's see here. I got it. I'm fully with you. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Thinking uh, to keep the weight cost down, use two inch pink insulation foam and paint. There you go, JR. You could do that for sure, right? Uh, I'm using half inch birch plywood. Uh, and yeah, you know, you want to keep the weight down and everything. I'm just because I'm doing a, and, and paint, I could do, you could do the foam and the paint too. Same concept, right? No way, you wouldn't know it was foam underneath. Uh, I'm doing, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do a distressed. I know I'm doing the uh, kind of a whitewash chalk paint, you know, kind of a white chalk paint. I don't know if I'm gonna do a distressed. I haven't decided that part yet, but uh, but yeah, absolutely. Cost and everything, you know, uh, down. Uh, just, hey, I'm always, you know, Wooden electricity, there's fire hazards. Wooden and, and foam, there's fire hazards. Just be careful with your lighting and stuff and foam and all that stuff and uh, all that good stuff. All right, now, on the deer here, on the deer here, uh, when I grouped him back together, his little part right there, let me ungroup him and select that little part right there and group that back in so I don't miss it. All right, now, baby girl here, baby, baby deer, don't know if it's a baby girl or a boy. Could be Bambi. All right. All right. Let's put Bambi in place. And I kind of want to put his mom in place too. So I can see. Let me see here. 
I think I am super good with that there. Okay, so those two, I'm gonna, since that's kind of where I want them, right? I gotta, you know, straighten up. I can't have that little foot right out there. But uh, that's where I want them. That will work for me. So I'm gonna take both of them together. And I'm gonna move them down. We're almost, we're, I mean, guys and girls, hang out with me just a little bit. We're almost there. Uh, to it uh, and everything. Now, I, I want to kind of create that, that that straight line plane for myself, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do very quick and easy for me, quick and dirty and easy, is I'm going to literally just kind of come up, pick a spot, any spot, and I'm going to go right here. And I'm literally going to shoot straight across 90 degrees there. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim right there, right there. Down there, down there, that and that, and create that kind of that flat line plane, right? Right, you with me? You got it, you got it, you got it, All right? Good. Now, I'm going to throw a tenon on here. So, uh, for me, we're going to go just right here. It doesn't have to be very big. And for her, um, I'll do two small ones. All right, now, uh, I wanna make sure that my height is proper, uh, 0.71875. Let me go back into the size tool because I wasn't paying attention to that. Uh, 0.71875, four and a half inches is good. I'm not gonna argue with that. On these two guys right here, 0.71875, Okay, and let's get it snapped into place. Snap right there. Now, I should be able to select both of those bad boys and weld them together. No, it still needs that little bit of overlap. It's, it's arguing with me today on that super microscopic overlap. I'm holding the control key down and bumping that up right there. It needs that little bit of overlap. It's, it's arguing with me on it. Okay, and then my dog bone fillet, bam, bam, okay? Same thing for my girl here. We're going to uh, make sure, let's snap this into place there. Make sure that that's in place there. And I'm just literally gonna hold the control key down and hit the up arrow key on my keyboard so it bumps up, oh, just a few thousandths of an inch, right? And then I'm gonna select these items and weld that together. Come back with my dog bone fillet and we're gonna do all the inside corners. One, two, three, four. All right, so I wanna keep these two together. I'm gonna group them just because of their positioning and stuff. And I'm gonna get them into place up here. Okay, cool beans, I'm happy with that. Let's move it over just a little bit to the left, right there. All right, now the present is next. Now her butt is gonna, the doe's butt is gonna be covering part of the present. I'm good with that. Uh, I just want to make sure that, um, and I know this gets confusing, like you're looking at all this stuff, right, on top of one another and everything and all. If that is bothering you, you know your two trees are in place, right? The two trees are in place. So um, we can come back to our layers here and, you know, our large tree and small tree layer, we can put them back where they belong. Uh, with their holders, I'm going to put their holders on the same layer. So that layer and that layer. That's my big tree. I'm gonna move that back to the big tree layer. Large tree. And then my little tree, 
and my little trees holder. I'm going to put that back on the little tree, small tree layer. And I can go in there and turn those layers off. Right? If that visual, if that, if all that stuff going on, you know, that's what layers is wonderful about. You know, um, once I have the parts laid out, you know, I could uh, move uh, the um, uh, buck to his layer, turn the visibility off. I could take the snowman, move him to his layer. I'll get rid of all the layers that I'm not using. Uh, snowman, turn the visibility off, right? And uh, I'm keeping the dough on because I need to see where the present is in association with that. But I could do that. Now, I do need the snowman on because the fox is going to be between the present and the snowman. So I'm going to go turn him back on. All right, let's grab the fox and get him into position. Okay, we'll end up uh, on the fox. I want to make, I want to kind of spread his two feet apart just a little bit more. So I'm actually going to cheat that by offsetting. Let me ungroup him. I'm going to take this offset right here, this vector, and I'm going to offset it actually a little bit more. I'm going to offset outward, and I'm going to go uh, like a eighth of an inch. And I want to delete the original, select the new, and uh, I didn't want to do that. I want to go a sixteenth. That was too wide. Eighth was too wide. And I want to kind of want to stretch it up just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit of space between the feet because I'm going to take the feet here on him. And again, let me, let me grab him and get him off the board just for a minute. I'll move him down here so you can see his feet. Uh, I'm going to take a straight line, pick a spot, any spot, and I'm just going to go right across his toe here. Snap to 90 degrees. I'm going to take scissors and trim away. Cool beans. And then I'm going to draw my tenon on him, right? So... Uh, my box, I'm just going to go, it's going to be just, just in just a little bit. And that'll be enough because he's also going to be supported by the present. You'll see that in just a minute. Um, but uh, make sure I'm at 0.71875 on the height. And click OK. Hello, Sorry. Auto. All right, we're going to. You guys all still with me? Yes, hit the save, hit the save. Uh, we'll do that in just a quick second here. Um, let me hold the control key and bump that up just a little bit to create that overlap. And I'm only gonna select the outside vector of him and weld that together, okay? Come in with my fillet, my dog bone fillet, and you know create that. Now, odd looking right there, I'd like to have a little bit more room and a little bit more of a straightaway. So I'm actually going to undo what I just did. And I'm going to size that in just a little bit more. Size it in just a little bit more. Um, and then I'll do the weld and the fillet. All right, now let me get him grouped together, group those two, group, and let me get him into place. So we're gonna get him snapped into place there. He's gonna be sitting like that. And um, now the present, now uh, Frosty's gonna be covering the fox's tail. I don't, I don't, I don't, I think I'm gonna have the fox's tail behind Frosty. The snowman, or not Frosty, but you know, the snowman. I don't know if I'm going to have the tail. I don't know if I'm going to have the fox being the utmost front piece, then the present, then the snowman. I'll, I'll know that here in just a second. But uh, I definitely know that the present is going to be behind the dough, of course. Uh, so uh, it'll be behind. 
But right here, let me get this into position. Um, This will make sense in two seconds. Bear with me. Okay. Now. The, when the present is in, the fox is going to be fairly close. There's not going to be a whole lot of gap between the fox and the present uh, and everything. So on the back side of the fox's um, paw, there's going to be a piece of wood... And I could even have it follow the contour of this because uh, it's going to get cut out of the uh, out of the material as well too. So I could um, basically take this curve now. I'm going to take the present here and I'm going to hit Control C. For copy and I'm gonna move that present out of the way for a minute and I'm gonna hit control V to paste a the copy that I copied back into its original spot there this is my original down here this is the copy now what I'm gonna the reason why I have that copy is I'm gonna ungroup it I'm gonna delete the two inside parts of the ribbon don't need those and I'm actually going to all I did all of that just so I could trim away get rid of what I don't want on this present Okay. All I want to keep, get rid of everything. All I want to keep is that contour right there. That's it. Just so when that part gets cut, it'll get cut so it can sit nicely. It's going to be glued on the back part and it'll be able to sit nicely on there to be support for it. Okay. Cool beans. All right. So this piece is going to be a separate piece. It's going to be literally cut. Uh, you know, on the CNC. Now, of course, I could have just taken a block of wood, glued it back there and been done with it where, you know, even if parts of it hit or I could have sanded it or whatever the case may be. But just, you know, we've got a part that I can't forget to uh, include with the, you know, the cuts. But now I can take my present, okay? And um, I could actually hit control V again to paste it back. That way it's exactly where it was and then get rid of this, right? Cool beans. All right, that way it lands right exactly where it was. All right, now on the, uh, remember this is three dimensional to two dimensional space. Uh, the paw is gonna be in front of the present and everything, so it'll be in front. Um, on my present, and move that down. I just need to put a 10 in here on him. Point seven one eight seven five by eight and a quarter. And I'm gonna get it to, I'm gonna hold that control key down, hit that overlap just a little bit. And weld that together. Fill it there and there. All right. Now for me, 
select that and the two parts of the bow, right? Okay. Uh, I can now put that back up into place. It should be just a straight lift. I'll hold the alternate key to keep it straight up while I lift it back into place there. And I should be good to go. Wonderful. Okay. So, um, turn everything back on. So the buck, the small tree and the large tree, this is going to be kind of my scene. All right. Um, again, imagine if this was, you know, the three wise men and Mary and Joseph and, you know, baby Jesus, and it was a nativity scene. Or uh, imagine if it was uh, a Valentine hearts with Cupid and his arrow and whatever, you know, whatever holiday, whatever occasion, whatever situation could be scaled up, could be scaled down. It could be a mantelpiece. It could be, you know, a wall piece. In my case, it's going to be an actual full size wall piece. You guys all with me on this. So we just laid this out. Now we need to take and almost turn things up on their side, if you will, and say, okay, where are our slots? Where where are the slots for our, you know, our parts? Where, where do they go? Where, you know, how do we, how do we know where they lay out and everything and all that stuff, right? So, um, the, my part, my panel, if you will, is 84 inches long, seven foot. Uh, it's gonna be 16 inches wide, okay? And so, let me come over here and do that. 84, 16, Okay, now my parts, my parts are uh, plywood and I now need to basically kind of take my pieces, if you will, and kind of flip them 90 degrees to fit them into place, right? You know, uh, these parts and everything here. So imagine that my plywood, my half inch plywood, is uh, now remember the only 0.71875 piece of plywood is going to be the three quarter inch that base, right? Uh, you know the the the, the base top. Um, the rest of it is going to be half inch plywood. So my half inch um, plywood half inch is the nominal measurement. So you have nominal and actual, um, and um, the uh, half inch, what am I trying to say? The actual measurement for half inch is 15 30 seconds. So 23 30 seconds for three quarter inch, 15 30 seconds for half inch, 13 30 seconds for, um, or is it, it's 11 30 seconds for, Eleven thirty seconds for three eighths, and then seven thirty seconds for half inch. So that's the actual measurements, right? And if you need to know that, you can type in, uh, you can do a Google search for plywood dimensions, and it'll show you actual and and, and all that. Anyway, long story short, fifteen thirty seconds is my magic number. That's how wide my plywood's going to be. Okay. So imagine. Let me show you how we're going to do this. Uh, my first part, big tree. Okay, big tree uh, and his part. So these two pieces. Okay, now the big tree doesn't have any tenons on it. It's getting bolted to this main part. So let me pull this. Uh, I'm going to pull copies. This is my original layout. So try to keep your originals intact and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm gonna move, holding that control D makes a copy. I'm gonna move a copy of this down. So this is my original intact over here. This is my copy that I'll work off of. Okay, right here. All right, so our Christmas, that way I don't screw up the layout and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. Okay, now the, if I 
take this guy and let me move my rectangle down into place here. All right. <clears throat> if I take my base and lay it in, in place and everything, imagine that I took my uh, Christmas tree and let me turn off, uh, so let me let me put things on layers and let me turn them off and all so we can work with one thing at a time so it's totally not confusing for you. Uh, bear with me a second. Uh, so um, first thing I'm gonna do, let me clean up my layers here. So I wanna right click and I wanna delete all empty layers. So any layer that's empty, I wanna get rid of. Um, layer, if I zoom out, layer 12 up here is kind of this tree right there, that's nothing. That was me earlier trying to lay out different designs and stuff. So we're gonna get rid of that. So we're gonna delete that layer and its data, okay? Um, layer two is a whole pattern. We're gonna delete that and its data. Um, layer four, and three, all right, so three are the stars, I wanna keep them. Ooh, something else is on layer three that shouldn't be. Okay, this part right here needs to be moved. Uh, I'll put him with the large tree for right now. All right, layer three, you can get turned off, that's the stars. Um, layer one, are all the vectors so those can get turned off uh i want large tree small tree light path is turned off layer six layer six is kind of what i'm working in right now layer six okay so move to a new layer this is going to be doe and fawn doe and fawn Um, that leaves me snowman, buck, doe and fawn, my present, move to layer, present, sorry we're doing a little cleanup, a little maintenance, a little maintenance. And Fox. Fox. Okay. So, and this is my... I'm going to put that on the same layer with the Fox. Move to the Fox layer. Okay. So, right now... Large tree. Okay. Okay. This is a copy, so those copies are on those same layers and everything, right? Well, I need to move this to a large tree copy. Uh, let's see here. Layout. We'll create a layout layer. Layout for the large tree. Okay. Select this and its part down here. Move to layer, layout, keep everything the same so it stays the same, layout, small tree. Cool beans. All right, doe and fawn, move to layout. Layout, Doe and Fawn. Buck, Layout Buck, Layout. Try to keep things consistent, Laney. Okay. 
layout fox. Layout present. I thought I did a layout present. Maybe not. Layout present. And layout snowman. Okay. Now, the reason why I want them on their different layers and all, because I need them to be exactly where they are. It's going to help me kind of position them where they go. So, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. All right, so this line can go away, and actually this piece can go away because that's not part of my originals that get cut and all that stuff. Okay, so when I turn um, when I turn these layout layers back on, let me turn off everything except for layer six here. Uh, let me rename layer six. That's going to be my panel top panel. Top, top panel, top panel, top panel. Base panel. Okay. Let me turn off everything and turn on all the layout stuff again. Now, with all of this here, the one thing that uh, did not stay was my, that little narrow rectangle, if you will. Um, and the, uh, one I'm referring to is right here. And I wanna move that to my panel six, where'd it go? Uh, uh, where's it at? Right there, top base panel. I wanna move that layer to there because when I have everything else turned off, you know, and stuff, I need that, I need that board there because that board is representing the side view of this top view which we're actually cutting we're cutting from the top down right now my plywood pieces okay my plywood pieces are 15 30 seconds okay so 15 30 seconds if I hit the equal sign 0.46875 all right now um so imagine, if you will, I've got one, uh, and it's the base part. So one, two, the snowman is three, the fox is four, the present is five. I don't know why I have four fingers up and I'm counting five. Big tree, little tree, base, the little mounting base. Snowman, that's three. Fox is four, present is five. The doe the fawn and the buck. So eight pieces, right? So if I take eight of these rectangles, I'm gonna hold down the control key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't care that I'm off, it's no big deal. It's not the end of the world, right? Now, I do not want, um, I do not want parts my, my these these pieces you know and everything um i do um i want them to be i would say probably about three quarter inch spacing in between each one so you guys and girls you're still with me you understanding you're with me and all that so oh let's hit save let's hit save yes thank you um I, I would like, 
uh, there to be about three quarter inch spacing in between them. And I don't want them right up to the back edge or the front edge and all that stuff. You know, I want them somewhere in the middle. So I have uh, the ability that I could say, okay, uh, let me offset this. I'm gonna hit Control C and Control V to copy and paste that rectangle. And if I hold the Shift key down, I can keep it centered while I size that rectangle down. And let's say that, and let me let me move these eight pieces real quick. So let me move these eight rectangles. We're gonna use them in just a minute. Let me move them out of the way. So on my big rectangle, I don't want to be right near the edge because I think I'd like to maybe radius the corners of this and all. So I don't want the parts like being right on the edge. I want them back off of some. And so let's say that uh, I decided that I want it to be, um, you know, about uh, three inches off the front or two inches, two and a half, whatever the case may be. Um, then... I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to just draw a two and a half inch rectangle there. I could use layout lines too, but I, I like using shapes. It, it just helps. All right, I'm going to lay that out there and I want this rectangle to start there. Okay. And of course, I want it to be, you know, lined up, but I want it to start there. And I don't want to go all the way up against the back of the wall, but I'm, I'm off the back of the wall by a good half inch, and that's fine with me. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Now, let's say that that's my boundary, if you will. Okay. Now, if I took these eight pieces here, and I held down the shift key, and I selected this boundary last, the eight pieces first, those... those, those the, my tenons aren't that big, right? But I'm just representing like a piece of half-inch plywood, right? So I've got these eight pieces here representing these eight parts here. I got my boundary selected last. I could go into the alignment tool and align them to the center. So they're all stacked on top of each other right now. And then I could align them, or space them equal distance. I could go horizontally or vertically, in this case vertically. And that will create an equal amount of spacing in there. Okay, so that will create an equal amount of spacing within the space that I wanted to work. Okay, now what is my spacing between each part? What's my spacing between each part? If I did that, if I did it that way, just out of kicks and giggles, I'm going to take a tape measure or a measurement. I'll go vertical and I'm going to go from here to here and I'm about one inch. 0.97. So I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I'm not going to complain about that being one inch apart and stuff. Um, my fox with him standing on the present and everything or looking, looking like he is standing on the present, you know, in that three dimensional field and everything, I'd like to have him a little bit closer. So I may take those particular two and I may move them back a little bit together one another, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Okay. I'm happy with this spacing. So what I'm going to do now is my tree, big tree. Okay. I've got the tree and the base selected. Uh, so the tree and the base selected and, uh, I'm going to keep them right where they are, okay? Keep them exactly positioned where they are, but I want them to, uh, I wanna bring them down. Let me select this and the tree and I'm gonna group those together, group. And their tenon location, the tenon location on that mount, uh, I want to align it with this piece here. So imagine if me taking that piece and flipping it 90 degrees and putting it in position, and then I'll trim this long rectangle to where those two spots need to go. So I'm gonna take my large piece 
in my tree and I'm just going to literally use the down arrow keys on the keyboard and I'm going to bring myself down uh, to this position just so I can get my tenon locations. Okay. So I'm going to use the down arrow key and I'm going to bring it down into position here. Now again, uh, it's just to get the position of these two tenons. Okay. So now I can come in and I can, and I could do everything with guidelines right up where I was and all, but I, I like moving the parts down into place and all that because once I move them into place, I'm going to turn that layer off. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm working in the top base panel because I'm going to be trimming it. Okay. I want to make sure that these six items here are on that top base panel. Okay. Make sure that layer is active. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to uh, draw a line from here to here. Spacebar. I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Spacebar. Get on from here to here. Here to here. And now that I've done that, I can move that part back up out of my way. Don't matter where I put it. I can actually turn that layer off. So let's turn that off. Large tree. Right? Get rid of it. And I can come over here with my scissors, trim away this rectangle. Okay, zoom in and clean up the lines. Okay, so that's where the big tree is going to go. You guys and girls with me so far on that? That's where the big tree is going to go. All right, now the next one is going to be the little tree. So we're going to select that and that. I'm going to hit G to group those two items together so they stay together. And I'm just going to use the down arrow key. And I'm going to bring them down to the next rectangle, which is this guy right here, right? And don't do what I just did. Um, I, I moved the wrong thing. Okay, sorry. Uh, get that down into position. And I'm going to take a line from there to there, from there to there, here to here. Now, make sure you don't do that. Make sure you don't miss. Okay, use your smart snapping and geometry snapping and make sure that you land your punch. Right, so from there to there, and from there to there. Now I can turn off the layer for the small tree. Oh, wrong down here. Small tree layout, small tree. Okay, and I can take my scissors. Okay, that's going to be the layout. Now we're not done with this layout. We still have some fillets to put on these tenons. We're not done with them yet. We're just getting them there first. We'll do all the fillets and everything last. Okay. All right, wonderful. All right, working our way down. So now uh, it's like, okay, what, what, what's, you know, what's our order? So I got our big tree, our little tree, uh, the present the doe is going to be her butt is going to be in front of the present so she's in front of the present 
Um, I think the snowman for me is going to be next. I think I actually want the fox's tail. All right, let's give a vote. Let's do a poll. Uh, fox's tail in front of the snowman or behind it? Fox's tail in front of the snowman or behind it? If it's going to be in front of it, then the snowman is the next piece to uh, lay out. If it's going to be behind it, then it would be the fox. So the fox tail behind it or in front of it? Let me hear you guys. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. While I take a drink of water. Okay, fox is telling front, so that means the snowman's going to be next. So, grab the snowman in front. All right, so the snowman's going to be the next one in line. So we're going to move him down to our third. Remember, these rectangles represent our half-inch plywood, right, on edge. All right, that's what it represents. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did there. All right, let's move the snowman down into position. All right, let's take a line tool and let's draw a line here and here. Space bar, hit that space bar for finishing the line. And from here to here. All right, so now we can turn off the layout snowman. Layout snowman, we'll get rid of him. Take our scissors, trim away that rectangle. Now, notice when we trim away, there's going to be some little vectors lingering, the end pieces and all. The, there's going to be some vectors, end pieces and all that are lingering. We'll, we'll, we'll clean up all those little open vectors and stuff. You know, uh, I don't know if you can see that little pink line right there. There's That's the end piece of that rectangle. I just trimmed the upper and the lower line. I didn't trim the one on the right, right? We're going to be able to just hit, we'll select those and hit delete in a moment. So that'll be our snowman port right there. Make sure that the rectangle, no overlapping lines, all good. It's all one vector. Wonderful. Okay. So snowman goes in and then we have our present the fox is going to be in front of the snowman he's also going to be in front of the present um so the present is going to be next so we'll bring that down to the next line you guys hopefully you kind of get it right now and you're probably thinking oh there's probably an easier way to do it but this is the way that kind of works for me and hopefully it kind of makes sense to you i don't know i'm hoping all right, let's take a line. Let's draw a line. We're literally just outlining our tenon, right? So here to here. Now again, make sure you snap it. You see I'm off, you know, escape. Uh, make sure you hit that target perfectly. Okay, so snap from there to there. Space bar to finish. And here to here, space bar to finish. All right, now I'll show you the cool thing that we're going to do with the star. We are going to put the star on the, on the top of the tree. We'll do that in just a minute. It's the last thing we're going to do. It's very easy. You'll see that. It has nothing to do with this base. Okay. All right, so uh, we can turn our present layer off. So layout present. We can go ahead and hide that. And then we can take our scissors and trim, trim. Trim that little overlap right there. And that little overlap right there and there. And then trim, trim. And remember, on the outside here, the outside vectors, when I select these, you'll be able to see those pink lines light up, and I'll just be able to hit delete to get rid of them. And on this edge, too, I'll be able to select those and hit delete to get rid of those uh, and things. Okay? So that'll be our present, where our present tenon goes. We haven't done the fillets for these yet, but we're almost there. All right, next uh, is going to be our fox. He's going to be uh, right in front of the present. So let's bring him down into position. I'm using the down arrow just to keep things in line where I want to go. I'm just using the down arrow to get me into position. Okay. And my position, what I mean by getting into position, I just need a little bit of a overlap of my line so I know where to draw my new trim line. So here to here, space bar to finish, and here to here, space bar to finish. All right, then we can turn off the fox layout layer, layout fox, turn that light bulb off, 
take our scissors, trim, 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 and zoom in and get rid of those little overlaps. All right, that'll be our fox. And then our doe will be next. Now, the doe and the uh, the doe and the fawn can actually be on the same row. They don't have to be. They don't have, have to be staggered. You know what I mean? They could be on the same row if you wanted, uh, or they could be. You could finish it off and you know have them on their own individual row. That's totally up to you. Okay. Uh, I am going to do uh, individual rows. Don't ask me why. Why am I doing individual rows? Let me see. Am I doing individual rows? I would probably want them on the same row, wouldn't I? I'm going to do them on the same row. I'm going to do them on the same row. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do them on the same row. Mm. I don't know. Let's get a vote. Uh, individual separate rows. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll do them individual separate rows. Yeah. All right, gonna throw you for a loop. Gonna do two at one time. Uh, we're gonna take our line tool. Let's start with the dough up here. Go line, draw, space bar, line, draw, space bar. Do her other tenon straight down, space bar to finish, and finish. And can anyone tell me why I'm doing them both at the same time on separate rows? We decided that, but why am I doing them both at the same time? Does anyone remember or know why? Bonus points if you can remember why I'm doing them at the same time. Maybe in the front. That's good. Um, the reason why we're doing them at the same time. Is because they are on the same doe and fawn layer. They're on the same layer. And it won't change the front spacing, yeah. Uh, but no, they're on the same layer because when I go in and turn that layout layer off to hide them, it's gonna hide both of them. I don't wanna have to turn it back on, you know, so that's why we're laying out both. All right, so take our scissors. We got this row, trim, trim. This is the does row. Trim, trim. This is the doe's row. Mama doe. Trim, trim. Okay. And then down here is the fawns. The fawns. Hey. Happy days. Show of hands for everyone who remembers happy days and the fawns. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and um, select the end pieces and hit delete. I'm drawing a box from left to right to select the end vectors. You can barely see them, but you can should see that pink. It's hard to see, but the pink kind of tint right there, you know, that's those end cuts of those rectangles that I've trimmed away. Just hit the delete key and everything. All right, the final one is Mr. Buck here, Daddy Buck. Uh, we're going to go... Down, down, down. I'm using the down arrow key on the keyboard to get him into position. And I'm going to take our line tool, draw a line. I'm going to move him up just a little bit. There we go. 
All right, take our line tool and I'm going to snap from here straight down. Control Z to undo, or X, uh, let's hit undo right here uh, and undo that. Now, his tenon is crooked. You see that? I don't know if you can see that jigged line, that jagged line right there. It's crooked. Let me see the other side. That's straight. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want a crooked tenon and all. So I'm going to go into node editing on him. I'm going to ungroup him. I'm going to go into node editing and I want to select this node right here. I don't want this node moving because that's that fillet. And I'm going to select this node last and I'm going to hit the letter X left to right X to move that into alignment to straighten that out. Okay. I'm going to select and group him back together before I continue. So I'm going to select all of his vectors, even this little guy up in his antler there and group hit G for group or the group tool, your choice. And now I'm going to draw my line. I don't want to draw a crooked line. I don't want a crooked tenon, you know, or, or, or more. I don't want a crooked tenon, but I don't want a crooked mortise, you know, just to match that tenon and all that stuff. So we're going to straighten things out. So now I'm going to draw my line 90 degrees straight down over here on this side. Snap there, straight down, space bar to finish. Come up to my layers. This is where layers comes in very handy and I'm gonna turn off the layer for the buck. Now, the layer for the buck, okay, he is no longer on there because when I ungrouped him, I was in the a different layer when I ungrouped him. So I need to move him back to that layout buck layer and then I can turn it off. Take my scissors and trim, 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 trim. And now, all right, when I trimmed, I was still on the buck layer. I didn't move back to my panel layer. So what does that mean for me? Well, that means that this vector that I just trimmed, this guy right here, okay, that I just trimmed, uh, he is on that buck layer, right? So I need to select him and move him back to my panel layer. And make sure that when I turn that buck layer off that I am in my panel layer when I'm trimming. Uh, let me get to it. Make sure that panel is active. That way those vectors stay where they belong. All right, let's get this done. Let's wrap this up. We are 11 minutes over 10 o'clock. You guys are falling asleep. Let's go to our scissor tool and trim that away. Trim that away and that away to make a closed vector. Okay. Now, now that we have all of our vector layouts for our parts, we can go ahead and select our end pieces. Make sure there's no end pieces. We can hit delete. I'm literally just drawing a box over the end parts and hitting delete. Make sure there's nothing there. My layout rectangle that I used to for the spacing and you know where I wanted these to start and end, I don't need that vector. Get rid of that. Get rid of this three inch block spacer that I made to where I was gonna start off that front panel. And now I can go ahead and decide here because this is gonna be a profile cut. We're actually gonna be cutting these pockets out and then we're gonna do a profile cut cutting this piece out. So now I can put my fillet on there. Um, I want radiuses on the front of that panel. I want a radius. And I want to go with a, I think I'm going to go with a one inch radius and I want one right, that's not that, not a dog bone fillet, a normal fillet. And I want to just do a radius here and here. Not on the back, the back's going to be up against the wall. So I just want, uh, you know, a fillet there. And uh, uh, I'm going to undo control Z twice. I'm going to go two inches. I'm going to go with a two inch radius. All right, now, um, very important. Uh, we don't need this rectangle here anymore. Uh, that was just to position my panel, you know, to match up with all the things I had laid out and all that stuff. But I don't, I, I, I don't want to turn it off uh, and everything. So we'll just leave that there for right now. But last step for this is we got to put our fillets in. We, you know, we have a router bit that's going to be cutting these pockets out, and when that router bit comes and cuts the inside of these pockets and everything, we don't want a 
radius right here. It can't fit a square peg in a round hole. And I don't want to have to sand all four corners of my tenons just to get them into here. So we got to put fillets in, okay? And these fillets that we're going to do are, um, they're going to be your dog bone fillets again as well. And we're going to go with eighth of an inch because we're using a quarter inch end mill. Uh, but uh, we're going to put those fillets on the ends here like this. Okay. So all of these parts are going to get their fillets. Now, if you want smaller fillets, use an eighth inch end mill and put 16th inch radius fillets in there, but it doesn't matter. Those are going to get kind of covered anyway. You barely see them and they don't, you know, mean anything. So on all of our little tenon positions, we go through and put our fillets in. Okay. And then this panel will be ready for laying out on our board and cutting it. Now, for me, uh, I do not want to do, I do not want to cut this panel in half and, you know, have it hinged together and all that stuff and, and everything to fit on my machine. So on this panel, I'm going to do tiling. You know, where uh, I clamp the board on the table, part of it's going to be hanging off my table because I only have a 40 inch cutting area. And I'm going to do the first tile, slide the whole thing down, cut the second tile uh, and everything. So um, uh, let me multitask here and talk. So I'm going to tile this, this panel here so I don't have to cut it into two pieces. Uh, if you have a smaller CNC and you need to cut it down, you, you know, this could be three sections, you know, uh, Try not, you know, on your sections, try not to fall on a tenon, you know, uh, and everything. Try your best not to, but, um, or a mortise. But, uh, you know, you might break it up into three sections and have splices, you know, uh, you know, just to get it to fit on your CNC and, you know, and everything. If you have a large CNC and you can do it all in one shot, great. I don't have a large CNC, so I don't want to split this in half. I don't want to split it into threes. I want it to be one full panel. Um, I have the storage room to pack it away as a, as a seven foot piece, you know, and all that good stuff and everything, you know, when I pack everything together and all that and bungee it or whatever. Um, uh, but I don't want to break it up in three pieces. So I'm going to tile it. I'll clamp it on my board. I'll carve, move the board down, carve, move the board down and carve and however many tiles I need. In this case, I should only need two. Um, but again, let me multitask. Don't miss any of the fillets on these rectangles, these mortises. All right. And these rectangles, of course, would be, they, they're representative of the size of the material I'm using. I'm using half inch. If you were using three quarter, then it would be three quarter. If it was quarter inch, because you're doing smaller, it'd be smaller, you know, and everything. But this is my half inch, 15, 30 seconds. Okay. See there, I almost missed two. All right. Take it and almost missed two there. Okay, let's take a good look. That one's done, that one's done, that one's done. This one has all four, all four, all four, and all four there. So that is complete. Let's go ahead and remove this. I'm gonna group this together so I don't miss move anything. I don't wanna move anything, right? That's my layout and everything there. So, um, you know, if I had this on the board, I'm going to go to a line to the center of the material, right? Now, I'm going to, I would be tiling this and everything, but I just want to do a pocket cut to show you the piece that we just carved, that we just laid out here. Um, it would be a pocket cut, cutting point, remember my panels, you know, 71875, it's three quarter inch panel. Um, I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. And uh, I'm gonna do a pocket cut, so that's fine. And I wanna ungroup this part. And I just want the inside pockets there. And we're gonna calculate that, right? And um, my material thickness is not half inch. On this part, it's 3 8 but this is just for visual purposes. I'd have the right sheet. We're gonna lay out the sheet here in just a minute. Uh, but um, the, you know, so those pockets would get cut and then we would have our profile cut out that's going to, you know, cut out with the quarter inch end mill. 
and it's going to cut out that part, right? So, and I put tabs and all that stuff, but that's gonna be my top panel. And then I'm gonna have a box frame underneath, four sides, you know, about eight inches tall. Uh, again, I wanna, I wanna overlap on the sides in the back, so I'm not gonna be, my panel, my top panel is 16 inches. I'm probably gonna have about uh, uh, 14, 14 inches or so of a box, if you will. But um, I'm just going to use pocket hole joinery and butt joints and everything. Nothing fancy with those pieces and all. Uh, I could cut them out of the, you know, cut all my parts out of my base pieces and everything out. Um, and so we'll do that. But let's set up our sheets now because uh, it's going to take more than one sheet. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on the big scale. So a four by eight sheet, like a four by eight machine. But then I'll break it down from my machine later and I'll, I'll provide you the files uh, and then you could break them down however you want. But we're going to do a new sheet. And this is going to be my uh, base parts. <coughs> Excuse me, my base parts. And we're going to take all of this. Let me group it back together for a minute. And I'm gonna move that to base parts, okay? Now, the rest of my base parts, and we're gonna wrap this up, guys and girls. We might have to continue this, but you should be getting the idea right now. Um, uh, profile tool pass, you know, drilling tool pass or pocket for the holes for the trees. We'll do one tree, and then you'll kind of get the idea for the other parts, but let's do the base really quickly. So, my base, I'm gonna lay out the side panels here. Um, my overall length of my top panel is 84 inches, but I want a two inch overhang on the front and the sides. I want a two inch overhang. Uh, it's just what I want. And um, I believe I left myself two inches. Bear with me just a second. Let me measure. Okay, I'm good. Um, so one and a half, two inch overhang. So let's go one and a half inch overhang. So if I am, um, if I were to take let's do this. Let's do this. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, let me ungroup it. It's grouped together. Bear with me. All right. I'm going to get rid of this fillet in here and this fillet here just for a minute. This way I can offset this inward. I'm going to offset it inward. And I want to go, uh, I'll go an inch and a half, 1.5 inches. Okay. So I want sharp corners offset. Now, that's going to be my box, my base underneath, right? That's going to be, you know, kind of a preview of the base. So I'm going to take this here and Yep, that's good. All right, I'm going to take this my uh imagine if you will, I'm going to be using plywood for it as well. So uh, my base is going to be half inch plywood. I I don't know. You guys, last poll for the night, three quarter inch plywood for the base or half inch for the box? I think half inch would be fine. But let me know. Three quarter or half inch, what would you do? Um, since I'm all cutting this all out of three quarter, I'm thinking three quarter, right? Because all the base parts are going to cut out of this one sheet. I answered my own question. Never mind. So uh, no poll. <laughs> so 0.71875. So we're going to have um, on here 0.71875. Okay. Now, imagine that this is my front piece. Hold down the control key and my back piece. 
Okay. Uh, let me get it perfectly aligned there. Okay. Now my side pieces, Point seven one eight seven five. Side piece there, control key. Side piece here, right? So literally gonna do box joints or you know, a uh, uh, pocket hole joinery to join that box together. And that's gonna be my, you know, my box frame, right? So now that I have my sizes how tall how how tall is this going to be and i said i said it's going to be eight inches right so uh, i'm going to take this it is the length that i need but i'm going to make it eight inches so i want to size this i want to keep the length the way it is the width but i want to go eight inches eight inches eight okay and that's going to be one side piece uh, this one here, I'm going to make it eight inches. That's going to be another side piece. This is going to be eight inches. That's going to go there. And the last one's going to be eight inches. Okay, now let's move things around. This part will go down here. This part will go up here. Now grain, right? You guys, this is plywood, whatever, but you might want the grain kind of running the same way. So rotate that, right? So we can have that part there and these two parts. Go with the alignment tool and line them up. Um, let's take this part, back it up. This part, rotate grain, right? Grain direction, all. Doop, doop. Let's get those into alignment. Okay, uh, we'll get this part, make sure we group those together so those don't get moved, right? We'll get that aligned. Now, I want to try to minimize my waste, maximize my yield and all that stuff. I still have two other parts uh, that, um, uh, no, I don't have any three other three quarter inch parts, so I can lay this out pretty much, you know, how it is uh, and everything and uh, keep that there and that there. Uh, if I, you know, maybe I have some other things that I need to cut out of it, right? I could, you know, move all this over. Um, don't forget to put my two inch radiuses back in there, but I could move things over for myself to minimize my, you know, maximize the yield of this board. If I have other three quarter inch parts that are unrelated to this, you know, I've got, you know, a good chunk of real estate here that I could use for other things. You know what I mean? Lay it out however you want to lay it out um, and, and all. So uh, now I do want to put my, before I forget, I want to ungroup this really quick one more time and put my fillets back in. That's my quarter and radiuses. I want to put my corner radiuses back on. And then I'm going to group those. Well, I'll group these together. And... Um, That'll be separate. It'll be a profile cut. Just don't move things around. Okay. So this is going to be my base parts. They're going to get cut out of one sheet. You guys with me? Right? Okay. Uh, you still need to move the Fox slot back about a half inch so the block will lay on top of the present. Yes. So uh, um, good, good, good question. Good call. So remember, this is the back here. Uh, the um, large Christmas tree, the small Christmas tree, the snowman, and the fox, the present, 
and then the fox is this guy right here okay um, if you recall and I'll do this with three rectangles uh, so bear with me so imagine that this is the fox and imagine that this is the present right imagine work with me and all um, there remember we're gonna put a block behind that fox's paw so it rests on top of the present now let me actually draw this to the proper size okay let me get things to the proper size so we can get things moved the proper way and what um, what John Thompson was reminding me of is, hey, you're going to be taking a piece of material. In this case, uh, it's going to be, I'll use, uh, I'll use a scrap piece. I'll cut it out. I'll lay it out on that three-quarter inch piece. Uh, remember that little block? We'll throw it on that three-quarter inch panel. Uh, so 0 0.71875. Um, so imagine if you will, I'm gonna have that glued to the back of that paw, right? So this needs to be able to, um, this, and let me ungroup. Remember, all my tenons are grouped together. I said group them together so they don't move. Let me ungroup them. But this here, we want to, it needs to, it's gonna be resting on that present. Remember, that was the whole purpose of all that. So I want to, while it's all here, keeping everything exactly where it is, I'm going to use the right arrow key on the keyboard. I'm not going to use the mouse and drag it around or anything. I'm going to use the right arrow key on the keyboard, and I'm going to just bump that over, right? Get it over. Now, that piece of material, I just want it sitting on it, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't have to be like touching right up against it. I just need that piece of material sitting on it. You know what I mean? So um, just some support, right? So I could be precise to where it's like sitting right on it, right? You know, like uh, I could have it like where it's right on it, right? But that's going to that's gonna determine that spacing of that bad boy right there. You with me? You understand? So that's what John Thompson was reminding me of, okay? So now that I have that, I can go ahead and delete that. And I can delete this rectangle. And I can regroup those parts back together uh, and I just had to reposition that and I told you I was gonna do that when we were laying out those lines and stuff thanks Tom, John Thompson for reminding me all right let's hit save to save our changes and stuff but remember there is a scrap little scrappy do piece uh, let me let me grab him let's go back up in and it was in the Fox layout this little guy right here He's going to be, he's going to be uh, on that present. Um, and if you recall, let me turn the present. Um, if you recall, you know, he was here and everything. This is his shape and all. And this contour was, you know, following the shape of that present and all. And it's going to be three-eighths of an inch thick, right? Um, or three-quarters of an inch thick. So this guy right here, we can go ahead and move that to the base part sheet and go back to our base parts. Okay. And that's the, he's way over here because that's where he was in the drawing. Uh, we can go ahead and move him and just throw him somewhere in one of these uh, cubbies. So it's just a little, little piece, right? Just a little piece that we're going to use uh, to cut out. I mean, heck, he's only, uh, one, you know, about an inch long and everything, about a half inch wide and everything. But uh, we can, you know, position him somewhere, but he's going to get cut out of there and that'll be his little, his little part. Okay. Um, all right. So that is our base parts. Now, we're going to have a, uh, this is the last cut you're going to see tonight. And then all the rest of the cuts are just going to follow suit. 
and I will provide uh, files and all. We've got to go to bed. We've got to get some sleep sometime, you know, and everybody's kind of dropping off and all that stuff. So uh, this is the last one. Here we go. We're going to just do a tree real quick with some lights. All right. So let's go back and turn on our master large tree here. Okay. Our master large tree. Uh, let's go ahead and move him onto our material. And other items are going to be laid out here. Not just the tree. You know, we're going to lay out as many things as we can. The fox, the present, the doe, the deer. Whatever we can fit to minimize this material, right? Or we're working with a smaller machine, so we're going to be cutting out a smaller material. I'm just focusing right now on a 4 by 8 layout. We can figure out, okay, I need to cut this tree in half and, and quarters and all or whatever to, you know, and I have to, I'll have to put it together when I assemble this whole thing to fit my machine, all that stuff, right? I know that, you know that, but right now I'm laying everything out on a four by eight sheet. So my fox, you know, he might be somewhere in here. Um, you know, this part here. The doo, 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 doo. this part wherever he can go. Um, we can rotate those, you know, and all that good stuff. I don't think the small tree will fit on there. I don't think. Um, No. Bummer. Okay. Uh, small tree, no. Uh, let's turn on the snowman. He can fit. Let's move this guy over. We're going to rotate him 90 degrees. Uh, one, two. Lay out what you can, where you can, all that good stuff. Uh, 90 degrees, one, two. I'm hitting the number zero key on the keyboard, by the way. Keyboard shortcut, 90 degrees, uh, number zero is a clockwise rotation in 45 degree increments. And zero. the number nine key is counterclockwise in 45 degree increments. All right, so that's that, that. Uh, the snowman, we can um, get him into... Uh, position. Good. We still have a star. We'll talk about the star in just a second. That'll be the last thing, I swear. Uh, but, you know, uh, let's see if we can get the present or the dough or something. Let's see the present. Um, And think about, you know, the plywood, the grain, and all that stuff, and, and everything, what you want to see, what you don't want to see, and all that stuff. Um, let me see. This is going to be this way. Uh, this I want like that. That I want like that. So I want the grain. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, the last... Let's see here. Uh, the doe and the fawn. I'm going to ungroup them. Now, we do have a nesting tool in VCar Pro uh, that, you know, would help us with nesting parts and all. But I'm just, you know... Um, doing my best to lay out what I can, where I can. Let's see here. 
I try, I'm going to be painting mine, so mirroring the part is not a bad thing for me, you know, front and the back and all, you know, you know how normally you have a good side of the plywood, a bad side of the plywood and all. Um, I want to try not to uh, mirror if I don't have to a part. Um, I want to try not to mirror if I don't have to. a part bear with me I don't mind if I'm at an edge. Um, Oh, come on. That's what they make tabs for. As long as my quarter inch end mill can fit in between the parts, I'm, you know, I'm fine. Okay, so his nose will get cut off. Bear with me just a second. I'm good there. I believe I am good there and we'll call it a day on that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so that gets a majority of my parts besides the buck and the small tree. Um, so it's going to be two half inch pieces of plywood for that. Uh, and then whatever else, you know, um, whatever else the, uh, you know, may come of it. But, we have a star, right? So I want to talk to you really quickly about the star. So these are three eighths inch holes. So it's going to be, I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. So it's not a pocket, it's not a drilling operation. It's a pocket cut. So it's going to be a pocket cut on the holes and a profile cut on the outer perimeter of the tree and everything. But uh, I want to take the for a second and I want to bring the tree over here just for a minute. And I want to bring the star Uh, let me see where the star right here and what's gonna happen is I need a copy and by the way I should have held the control key down let me give me two seconds here uh, when I drag this tree over I want to hold the control key down I almost screwed myself up Hold the control key down I want a copy of this I want a copy of that um, I can ungroup this copy Let's put it, make sure we're in the same layer, tree, large tree layer. Um, I want to ungroup this copy. And all of the circles, I can delete. I don't need any of them for what I'm about to do here. The star, I 
Let me align that. Shift, select, and align left to right. Oh, shit. Align left to right. And that's not center. So let's manually do it. Do, 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 do. Now, I think that's an appropriate size star for the top of the tree. It doesn't need to be the real big one. Um, it doesn't have to be really big. I think that's an appropriate size there for the top of that tree. Um, and, you know, we'll go, we'll call that, we'll call that good there. Now, here's what you're going to do. We are actually going to create another piece of material, another piece of material that's going to get cut out. Uh, that's going to sit on this part right here. So uh, we're going to take and offset. We're going to offset uh, this vector outward. And I'm going to go uh, two and a half inches. Oh, no, I am not going to go two and a half inches. I'm going to go one and three quarter. Nope, I'm gonna go, am I gonna go just one inch? Let me see. I need to stay inside the star. Yeah, uh, that'll do good. All right, we're going to, uh, let me draw a line uh, right here to here. Or I can go straight across, it doesn't matter. Uh, 90 degrees, it doesn't matter. There to there, and pick a spot here to here. And then, everything else, will get trimmed away. This part is going to get glued to the back of the star. This part and 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 uh, Janet, I'll look at that rotation of the fox. Um, I think you were referring to possibly something like that, and move that down. Good call, Janet. All right. So this part is going to get glued to the back of the star. So it will actually sit when, when it's glued to the back of the star and everything. It'll actually sit right on top of that piece, right? It's like it fit like a glove kind of thing. You know, it'll fit right on top of that piece. And um, there's going to be, you know, in that part, you know, our, 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 tree is a half inch, you know, five eighths. So that little U shaped piece is going to be five eighths. And then we're going to have a solid piece. So there's going to be a second piece. Ba -ba -ba um, let me do this. Control and drag a copy off. And um, we'll just take a straight line and we'll straight line it right here. Okay. Um, hold down the control key. I'm going to copy this again. Okay. So we're going to have a piece that mounts to the back here so this one's going to be gone i i just did that straight line to straighten this up so this is going to be you know glued to the back of the star bam and then this piece is going to be just a solid piece like that that gets glued to the back of that and it's going to create like a sandwich and that star is going to be able to slide right over the top of the Christmas tree into that groove. So those three pieces 
you know, one, the star is going to be in the front. That U is going to be in the middle. That's what hang, that's what hooks onto the tree. And then the back piece is going to be the back piece that kind of traps it all in. So it doesn't, it can't fall off forward, you know, and slip off and all that stuff. And it just slides right on. You guys with me? So these two pieces. So we'll have this part here. We'll have this part, you know, over here that's going to get cut out. And then, you know, your star, right? And the star can go on to the other uh, sheet with the, with the deer, with the buck, you know, in the tree and everything, right? So, long story short. And it's just going to slide right over the top. And it's literally going to hook right on. You know what I mean? You guys with me? See how we did that? We used the tree's shape to create the shape of this little part here so that when it's glued to the back of the star, the star will just, boom, it'll clamp right on, you know, into position or it'll slide right on and, you know, into position. And, um, and that back piece is just so it, the star can't fall off forward, right? So, yeah, anyway, like a little sandwich. All right, so there's that. So there's our layout, if you will. Um, uh, this is our layout. Thanks for the rotation of the fox idea there. Uh, but uh, this is our layout for the cutout of our parts. And uh, we have another sheet. So we had another sheet, sheet three. Um, and these two parts, that can go away. The deer, where's the buck? The buck stops here, that guy. I think he's the only thing left. I think we got everything else. Present, doe, snowman, fox, yeah. So these three parts can get moved to sheet two, which is this guy. And then, you know, that can get laid out And again, I don't want to rotate. I want the grain kind of all running the same way, blah, blah, blah. So I will do my best to uh, minimize waste and maximize yield. Um, uh, I don't want to mirror the part or anything like that. So I'll just throw him here and we'll throw this guy. And then if I have anything else for another project or whatever, I can, you know, fill in the blanks if I have to. If not, you know, I, I, I'm just going to cut the parts out and I can set that sheet aside and use it another day, right? But again, for me, I'm going to have to break it down even more to a 24 by 40 inch cutting area. Um, my trees, uh, this tree here is 31 inches wide, right? My, uh, I have 36 inches of space between my CNC machine but I only have a 24 inch cutting area. So I'm going to have to do some, you know, uh, I'll have to kind of cut things and splice and all that stuff together. Uh, it's the nature of the beast. I might have to cut it into sections, you know, cause it's, it's 43 inches tall. So I only have a 40 inch cutting area. I can do two panels and I can tile those two panels, you know, so I could literally cut this tree down in half. I can cut the other tree down in half and I can tile two panels to cut them out. So I'm only, you know, putting together two panels type of thing. But I will figure out that layout for myself and I'll let you guys know what I did. Um, but for now, we just have it kind of laid out on um, uh, let me get rid of this. We have it laid out on three sheets here, right? So this project, so our three quarter inch sheet uh, for the base and then our half inch, two half inch sheets for the parts. And again, this could have been anything. It could have been a nativity scene. It could have been, you know, something for Halloween, you know, tombstones and Frankenstein or whatever. But just think of this concept for all the other holidays, you know, Easter bunny, big old Easter eggs in front of a bunny, you know, Easter, you know, that kind of thing and, and all, whatever it might be, right? Uh, Memorial Day, um, 
you know, a, uh, a flag and remembering, you know, a soldier, uh, all these things, you know, it could be an outdoor project, you know, like a, like a monument, if you will, uh, that, you know, that goes out once a year, whatever the case may be, just use your imagination, but use these kind of ideas and these layouts or these things for that project. Right. All right, everybody. Uh, we have stayed on long enough. This is the longest we've ever done a class. I hope you stayed awake with me. If you fell asleep, that's all right. It's recorded. You can watch it later. Remember in January, we're going to be in Baltimore, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio. We're going to be in Indianapolis. And then in February, we're going to be in Atlanta uh, at the woodworking shows. Be sure to check us out there and come see us. And if you know anybody that's looking for a CNC machine, if they order and pre-order for pickup at any one of those shows, uh, you know, it's um, uh, free shipping because they can just pick up at the show. But also we have a Dear Santa special with some big savings going on on our machine and stuff. So uh, spread the word. We'd love for you to have it over there at digitalwoodcarver.com. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thanks for hanging out this late at night for all of you that are still with me. I will catch you later and um, y'all have a great night. See ya.